I am here vibing with a man who has created one of the most iconic and famous sound systems anywhere in the world. His parents named him Keith Walford, but we know him as... Father Wally, B.S. Odyssey Boss, Father Keith, Wally, you name it. So many different names you have to just know, say. Father Keith. We accept all of them. Great man. Blessings, man. It's a joy. Blessings. It's yes. a joy. It's a joy. Yes, it's a pleasure. One of the man we create. You know, whatever man creates sound, but you have created an institution, a brand. I, I, I love to think so. Yes, man. Yeah. And we intend to keep it going as long as music plays. A, a long time. Like, you know. <laughs> music will forever be playing. Forever, man. Forever, man. <laughs> yeah. So all is well, though, great man. Yes, man. Blessings. We give thanks, you know. It's good to see Health you. Health and know? strength, yes. Mm -hmm. That's nice. Teach them. Always make sure the message I reach them. Talk to us though, early life, place of birth. Right here in Alexandria, where we are right now, St. Dan. Yes. And, um, you know, it was right in this very place after that, the whole idea of BSR, was, it started. Right, I was it, it, Well, in you know, the house. In you know, the house. Yes, man. <laughs> because what happened, you know, is that I always want to give myself a little Christmas present. Ah. I said to myself, when you're working, you buy yourself something for Christmas. And this particular year, because I've always been in music, really. I, my father used to do jukeboxes. So, so, so this particular Christmas, we buy myself a component set mm -hmm. and started to do cassettes. And that time, cassettes, people don't know about CDs, cassettes, and just give them to people, you know? And um, so that's where it all started. And yeah. of course, from the cassettes out there, taxman them playing it. You know, a lady asked me to do a birthday party for her daughter, and we went out and did it, and it just spiraled from there. So the idea, that was the original Genesis idea. Behind it. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. right, hold it there. So we're going to pick up down there, sir. But I'm going to step back a little, though. How mm -hmm. many brothers and sisters? Ah, uh, I can't remember. Well, my eldest brother died. He died my from another night. So it's a long time ago. I still have my next oldest brother who is in Mobile. He's, in, I think, I'm about 80 now. And of course, we have on my mother's side, I have another brother who is. Um, in the church, oh, okay. he preaches. So every once in a while, whenever we speak, he prays for me. And I do Nothing think that his prayers that. are helping Keeping me along them. the way, yes. Mm -hmm. And another brother who, again, he died just last year. And, um, of course, another sister in, in, in Canada. Yeah, my condolences. Yeah, man, yeah, it's, it's a way for us. Lady would have passed they, on. they passed on from years now. Years now. You know, actually, I was blessed with two mothers. Two mothers? Yes, my biological mother, and then I was um, adopted with my stepmother, who is okay. my father's wife. And so um, blessings I'm, I'm all blessings around. all around. Blessings uh -huh. all around. Where uh -huh. did they attend school, though? Uh, from infant school right here in Alexandria, then to Inverness, York Castle High School so is Inverness where Primary, I, Inverness Primary, and, then York, and then York Castle, and coming out of York Castle, we just decided to say why I wanted to do my own thing, mm. you know, so to speak. Yeah, and, and um, I know you made mention that daddy was involved in the jukeboxing. I think he also was a mechanic of Yeah, man, he was a top mechanic in the day around here. We are, you know, everybody would have bring them vehicle for him for repair, most regardless as a top mechanic. Yes. And um, you used to do some jukebox thing on the side, you know, them things. So you're putting a people bar and you drop your 10 cent and you get five tune feet. Mm. So when I left school, I took over that part of it and he said, Boy, I'm going to make certain so that I um, can do everything myself. Right. So he sent me to learn how to fix them. So I ended up in Mandeville and Kingston with a good friend of mine, Bunny, and we. Basically, he was the expert at it, so he taught me quite a bit about it, and the little basic electronic knowledge started from there, you know. And um, we just grew from strength to strength, basically. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think, though, you wanted to be some, some bank clerk type of thing. When I yeah, started. one at a time, you know, just leaving school, and you say, boy, you know, you go to the bank, and you see people dress up all nice and neat, and you say, boy, I mean, I love to be one of them kind of man, you know, and glad the money and thing, too. <laughs> But um, it never worked out. I applied and uh, I am thankful that it, I wasn't that accepted. It never yes, and, uh, <laughs> but uh, fuck, I, I, I wanted to drive trucks. So I mean, I think about to go around and um, the backside company and oh, drive one of them big trucks there. Eh? And that never worked out either. And my father just said, Boy, you know what? You know? Well, before that, I was accepted into electronic um, 
college in Canada. Okay. Yeah, man, I accepted everything to go right through student loan, everything, and then there was a little hitch with the immigration. And my father just get fed up and say, you know, just stay with me, boy, and, you know, take over the jukebox part of the business there. Eh? Yeah. And so, then we go learn, and that is where we, the, the whole thing started, yes. you know. So since then I've been from jukeboxes, then migrated into sound, sound system. system and cable yes. operation. Yeah. Even mm -hmm. before we reached that, oh, cable operation? Yes, I man. I did not know that. Yes, man. And I see some more for all cables oh, outside. Oh, all on you, man. Where are this respect the man fiber cable? <laughs> oh, cool, man. So yes, still, man. Still do yes, that. man. I, I provide um, cable for the community. We, just where I live. We haven't okay. venture out too much, you know, the big boys out there. But yes, for the yes, yes. immediate area, Alexandria and all the nearby you know, communities, I provide cable. Yeah. Nice, man. Yeah, nice. Man. Mm. And that just came from. Oh, that's you know, you know, in the days when you have to have them big 20 dish. foot dish, yeah. you know, and everybody wanted, and I was maybe one of the first or second people in the community with that dish. So they kept asking me, you can't give me somebody, make what somebody, you show know, them. show them. <laughs> so we started, you know, with really cooperation with four channels and, you know, as we say, once you see the progress, so you keep putting back into it and we build till we reach where we are now. Reinvestment. Reinvestment. We yeah, just keep putting right. back. Yeah. Yeah, you were also very active as a, as, a, as a child in sports. Yes, man. Play a whole heap of cricket, man. When I first went to York Castle, I made the, um, the Headley Cup team from First Farm. Headley Cup from First Farm. From First Farm, man. I bowled some fast ball, so man. No they, big boy, them couldn't play. Yeah? It. Oh, yeah. you were a fast bowler? Yes, and then became an all rounder. I used to open bat for York Castle, too. And um, went on to play for the parish. Got selected in the Jamaica under 19 and trials. And to this day, I'm still the president of St. Anne Cricket Association, nearly 20 years now. And I'm a director on the Jamaica Cricket Board. Because this is, this is my next love, you know cricket and so cricket, I keep cricket. myself active with that. Love football too, you know, I'm a sports person a whole, but cricket, cricket is the one person. that I chose for the first mm -hmm. love in sports. So you mm -hmm. said no, you started treating with the, the duke box thing, helping the old man, mm -hmm. learning, learning, learning. And, yeah. and even indirectly you were, well directly and indirectly, you were involved in the music because them times you have to load the jukebox with the hot songs them at the time. Yes, because you remember the jukebox can only hold like let us say sixty songs. You know? 60, right. So you have the front side and you have the version. Mm -hmm. Right. So you have to make certain that at all times, because that is where you learn to be a selector too, you know. So you have to make certain that at all times you have the most popular songs in, in a Jamaica in a jukebox. Otherwise when you go to the people them cause you oh come on them new songs in a jukebox. So you, you had to be abreast. And them time there, Dennis Brown. Dennis Brown, I can remember coming down there and with him box a record I sell, Errol Dunkley. Oh, so the they man came there. down to sell the Yes, records. man. Yes, man. Our people on their behalf. Okay, right, right. You know, we, we in the jukebox, so they have heard of us. And them, oh, okay, so they come yeah. seek out the business. Right, because, you know, by one, you know, if you have 100 jukebox or if you have 20 jukebox, yeah, you have to buy 20. Copy of the same song. If you put in all of the jukeboxes. You know, and a man go there and you know, used to know, say, a jukebox used to keep the party. You know, like now you have power boxes. Right, right. You no know, man, them time, them man, man line up yeah, with them 10 cent. Too. Sometimes it all cause problem because you will punch your tune and a man don't like it and then grow on back, go sneak around and reject it. Oh. And man say, oh, you reject me song. So it cause all eruption. Yes, man. But nonetheless, it was interesting days. You had to keep it going, you yes. know. And 10 cent was the other day. You know, mm, so so the good do days. thing now, and you were traveling all over, servicing, servicing what we do. So if you have a bar, and we would say pass through and say, well, does this bar have potential? You know, what I mean, a little, cause you don't they just put it every everywhere, right? You know, but you and have a major square. You see, you you put it where traffic, where a lot of people drink. Mm -hmm. You know, so you might put some here, so there, so so basically we covered the greater part of St. Anne, the greater part of St. Anne. We didn't reach the north coast, but all up this side there with bars and things, that's what we, we did with jukeboxes. Yes. Yeah. So you said now one Christmas you decided you were going to get yourself something nice for Christmas. Yeah man, I always get myself something for Christmas, man. <laughs> this is not a, something in my house though, something, you know, right, right. Where, we, where we know going last. So this particular one I wanted a component set. 
because I was always in, in love with music, you know. Mm -hmm. So I got it and would just come up in, come in at night time and do me little mixing and thing, you know, buy another turntable put to the one I got. So and, two um, turntable you run off them, them days? Yes, because man. Because one of them company components. One company said, component said, one. so I buy a little mixer, <laughs> them a little Gemini mixer and another turntable. And um, started the stay up and with the love with the music and thing. And, and um, recording, you know, you used to go to Aquarius record shop off with tree where we get to stock. And um, that, that's where it all started. There's a mm -hmm. cassette used to go out there until, as I say, when, um, when I was requested. The, 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 the whole idea hit home when I was requested to, to the, the birthday, birthday party. party. That was, and in it was Brownstone. In Brownstone. And it was such a resounding success that nearly everybody said, Boy, you have to be a sound, you have to be a sound. Because them time we, we actually borrowed some of the equipment from uh, another friend who lives in the area, you know, who had a system. So Which we borrowed one. Um, Echo Stone. Echo St okay. Mm -hmm. So we borrowed an amplifier from him because me and the owner was very good friends. We borrowed an amplifier and two bass boxes and then used my two boxes to play mid when we oh, come okay. with the component set. So put together something that could play for your house party. And uh, 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 fit the, the venue. And uh, fit the <laughs> venue and nice it up, you know? Yeah. Yeah, so that's uh, where it the all started. First dance, people are requests. Yeah. So you started acquiring equipment. Right. So. Fortunately, I was always able to travel, because I mean, travel from early days. When my brother was in Canada, he'd invite me up, so we had a visa. So we start, I started to travel, go to New York and such forth. I started to acquire equipment, you know, and bring them in one one, step by step. As a matter of fact, the first big date that we had, um, we used one of the amplifiers mm -hmm. out of the jukebox to play tweeters, because we never have enough. Never. Oh. Uh, so we used one of the jukebox amplifiers to play tweeter. And um, as I said, my friend Bonnie was instrumental and Winston. Yeah, man. Uh, at that time, we were, you know, all in it. In a jukebox business. He, yeah, man, because he was the one who um, originally knew how to fix the jukeboxes. Oh, okay, because you learned from him. Right, so I was, you know, fortunate enough. Yeah. So we learned from him, and Winston was a gaming machine guy. Oh, okay. So that is where the, the relationship started, you know, mm -hmm. as, as friends. So, um, and you said the first big, biggish date when mm. you started building the sound was where? Right here, sir, man. Right here, sir, see me? Right here, sir, man. Right here, sir. Everything originated right here, right here. Mm. You know, when we started. But he was, he was into carpentry and all of them things. So the first set of boxes, when we, he was actually the, the one who built them. The, the, the originator and said, well, boy, we are trying this design. and. You know, so he okay. would have built those boxes. He built them in Duany Park. He used to live in Duany Park. Oh, you, okay. Yeah. So the boxes were days. built in Duany Park. Some of them. So this 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 mm. conversation that has been out there, because I've heard a few statements which suggest mm. that Piesa DC was first in Duany Park, then to Saint Anne. No. No such thing. No, no such thing. Piesa DC was always from Saint Anne, right? Because if you know Duany Park, there was nowhere there to. For even a sound, so, the, only, the only thing the sound could do there is stop overnight in the truck and move again. You know, but a few of the boxes were built there. Because he lived there, so he would build a box or two. And I remember when his daughter was having a party, we actually tried to build the boxes to finish for his daughter's birthday okay. party. Mm -hmm. So maybe one or two of the boxes, but all of the major work was always yeah. done here in St. Anne. So question, and the sound has always been based yes. in St. Anne. Well, one more thing before me ask a question. I think, so the first date that you got after the birthday party, I think it was. Ash Wednesday, 1989? 89. Well, that, that, was a, um, that was down in St. Dekka. Another friend of ours, we, um, Peter Bent, who used to run. He used to run a bar down there. Good friend of ours, too, okay. you know. So he said, boy, I'm happy to get the first play. That was the first time I think oh, we played as Bass Odyssey. Oh, OK. Because before that, we, you know, we used to just play. Play, no name. No name. But when we got the name Bay Sadisi was when we played 89 Ash Wednesday for him down at Cindy Canada Road. Yes. That time we had acquired a bit more equipment and we could have it actually play without borrowing anything. Yes. Uh -huh. That is one of the great names in the sound system space, Bay Sadisi. Original. Where the original Bay Sadisi. What, what, what was the, the inspiration behind the name? Well, um. It started, the whole idea came from the word Odyssey at first, because there was a nightclub in New Kingston named Odyssey. Odyssey. And we used to pass it daily, and we just love the name, you know? And um, 
Bonnie had an uncle who was into music as well. And he used to um, acquire a whole heap of old records. Because, you know, going into the sound system thing, you know, only going with the new records, you wanted to go in with a full complement of full cover of all the genres. Right. Yeah. So somebody was selling out um, records. Okay. Right? And we were looking through, because we couldn't decide on a name. We never, we wanted to be original. We never want to follow nobody. We have never been like that. You know, everything we do in a sound business, we try to originate. You know, not saying, say, if we see something good, you know, but we, we don't just look at a man thing and we, we, we always do a little due diligence and know what is, where we're going, you right. know. And worst of all, we wanted the original name. So when in looking through and looking through the records, man, um, we just book up on this Jeremy and Jackson album. And we have said so many times before. And one of the tracks on the album was the bass Odyssey. Mm -hmm. The bass Odyssey. It's an instrumental song. Right. But it's on the song. It's just a name. name. So once the, we saw the bass yes. Odyssey, of course, we had always loved the Odyssey. So now the whole bass Odyssey. And we said, yes, so everybody agree right here and then that this is what we are going with. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. And at first, most of the artists, most of them who did dub plates for us had a difficulty calling the name. It was just a cause lift tongue, BS Adi, Adi. You know, some of the early dub plates, them just was not pronounced properly until after, you know, they get, just they become a household name. Yeah. Who was the first person you actually caught? I, I can't remember that, but um, I remember that his brother Dennis Starr was a producer at the time. So. Um, we used to get dub plates to Bonnie. Bonnie, okay. Bonnie had a brother, Dennis Starr. With Dennis Starr, Bonnie brother? Yeah, man. Okay. Uh -huh. So, in the early days, yes, he helped to acquire quite a few of the dub plates because he was a producer. Right. You know, so um, I can't remember which song to say that. That was the first. That was the first. But I remember one of our first biggest songs, though, was a Ziggy Marley. Oh, yeah. Ziggy Marley, because of the, the link again. We, I think we're maybe one of the first sound systems ever to play Ziggy Marley and dub plate. I, I, and I've not heard him doing much more after that either. I, you know, the other man. Mm. Well, <laughs> that time we actually, because of the link, he you just did it. Man, you know? Don't but, me answer the reason why I probably didn't hear much of the dub plate. They, 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 they know, man, them yes. dub plate, they always <laughs> carry weight, man. Yes. So let me <laughs> ask you another question, though. Was mm. there a formal agreement between yourself, Bonnie, and Winston? No, as there's As it relates no, to who mm. wanna ship off the soul? No, no. Nothing like that, nothing like that. We were just friends. We were just friends. So everybody would just do for them like a rule, okay. what, they, what they have to do. I make you the know, thing work. I make the thing work. He used to come down, <clears throat> he used to come down to St. Anne, mostly on weekends, you know? Yes. and uh, go to the system, little bits and pieces like that. And Winston used to do his part as well. There was always a role there for everybody, yeah. you know. But unfortunately, like most things, because from then I've never been into a partnership again. Okay. You know, I, I, I learned from that. that. Down the road yeah. still. Mm -hmm. the f so you now was the, the original selector. Ah, Select that. Great place at this Right. Box Drive man. the van, lift up box, as a matter of fact. The guy who used to um, lift boxes with me is right here and I'm around the back there working him drive one of the truck, we call him Branto. Nice man. So him there from the beginning. He was from the be as a matter of fact, he was a mechanic with my father. Oh. And when my father got old and close on the mechanic business, he just came across with me and we were doing the jukebox thing together. He must go out with me. And then when we started the sound, it was me and him really. You know, right. I drive this van and we lift up box and then after that now me used to go play because I was a selector at the time, the first selector. And um, so I played multiple roles in and, it. And that is one of the unique things about this at the city, you know. Mm -hmm. I suppose like with mention me that the, the, the owners of the sound mm -hmm. actually play the sound. Play the sound, yeah. I mean, well, we it, still it, it, to as well. It, yeah, we do it all. Right. It, that is maybe is the long levity of the thing because we we're not only doing it for the business, we're doing it because we love the it. love of it, you know. Mm -hmm. So even when things are rough, we still stand up in it because we love it. You know, we don't just chew in the towel. Yes. And, you know. and I think the second person to play the song was Mark. <laughs> um, after you. For one night. Just one night? Yeah, because what happened with like Mark, that? because um, I had played at a, 
I, I don't know if I'd played, because it's a long time before right. I played, I attended a party in Ocheria, so Mark was playing. Oh, okay. Right? And um, of course, we'd sell him, say, boy, we are telling the idea, so we are build this sound system. Which sound was Mark at the time? Uh, one of them sounds from Ocherius, you know. Um, I don't remember my name because it's so long ago, but he okay. was playing for your son in Ocherius. Them times they used to have bank parties, mm. nurses' parties, Christmas, you have so many different, every bank have them only could party, you know. Things used to be so nice. Used to be so nice. Used to be so nice when you look forward to going to these parties because it was always so, so fun. Them time, if you don't have your lead, you can't go on the dance floor either. You just yeah, still from man I go and dance and dance by themselves. You run yeah, you out. Yeah, man, yeah, man. <laughs> if you don't have a partner, you can't go up on the dance floor. Yeah, yeah man. So you know, that was those were the good old days. So we met my Mark was playing there and um, he came up, he got a drive with me, come up the night, and uh, of course we were talking about the sound and coincidentally. So he, he came by like a few days later and looked at the equipment and him stayed and he mixed kind of just love everything that time. Um, the, 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 the techniques, 1200 mm. turntables. That was the thing in those days, the turntables. So we had acquired two and everything was coming together. So he did some mixes and things. But um, so we played one night and he came. I think it was over in St. Catherine, somewhere over there. Uh, but after that, he migrated. Oh, okay. So he just did the one night and said why he had gotten with a family or commitment, so I would say migrated. And um, was away for maybe years after that. Okay. Right? So then came Tinawan, because Tinawan is a man now who is originally from this area, but he used to be on a song named Black Melody. It, it was my Jack song. Ruby at the time, though? Played Jack Ruby, too. Played Black oh, Melody. Black Melody was your cousin song? Mikey song, uh, just a couple miles on the road. So he used to play that song, and he, he was maybe a DJ, DJ huh? too. Yeah, man. Remember he was a type of DJ? DJ, yeah, man. So he had, of course, pursued a career in the DJing business and thing, and he played song along the way. Something like, you know, oh, Charlie Black was a. Right, right. And then Selected branch him. arch into a big artist now. So Tinawan was there. So um, we had asked Tinawan for, you know, I remember we going to a, a, a dance, I think it was in Kingston. I think it was somewhere in Kingston. And Tina Wan said, boy, I wanted to come with us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were at the gas station and Sendika put in gas. So it was weird for me, man, to change my shoes or something like that. You know, kind of just go down to Mikey place so okay, was down right, right. and come back. So he, he journeyed with us and played. But when Tina Wan came, he was mainly the mic man. And I was oh, the man who silk and, mm, and do all of that, you know. So he was mainly a mic man, not a mixer. He just used the mic. Right. Kind of had that golden voice for, for mic, you know. So Tinawan was, that was the start of Tinawan being with us. And me and him used to do all over the place. It was me and Tinawan for the, maybe, I don't know in terms of how long to put a time frame on it, yes. maybe the next year or two. But the sound was established with Getting a name. Father Keith and Tinawan. Right, right. So, so you so guys started me. making it because I think this was a time now when you were crashing a lot of the sounds in St. Anne. Right, turbo more charge turbo and charge and you name it, nearly mm -hmm. all of the sounds. There was one in Discover Bay to where we had to clash. But we clashed basically nearly all of the St. Anne sounds who I had a name. Easy Rock as well was one of the sounds around. Easy are Rock was down there, so. Um, I can't remember the sound in Discover Bay that drew a lot of crowd to man. Cause we, we clashed with him over the, the Fisherman Beach, the Free Beach. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. Big dance. A big dance too, man. Yes. And he came up, because he have a cousin who had a club just down the road, a briggy. Okay. So he came back to play with us up here as well. And, you know, it, it, was, it was nice, just so fun. So you guys were slowly making a name? I'm making a name. Picking off the songs in St. Dan, one by one? One by one. You and Tina one? Me and Tina one. All over the place. We remember a couple of clashes up at uh, um, GMC Lesser, where we took on some songs from Maypen. I don't remember them name, but we really gave them some good beating up there too, you know. Yeah. <laughs> some good, good beating. So we were making a name all over, and of course the name started to grow about this right. sound uh, uh, at St. Anne, until we, um, we decided to take on Bodyguard. So Bodyguard was the first, big, quote unquote, big, big sound. Big right. So we took him on just up the road, up at Tabernacle, and remember, a lot of people are saying, hey, my 12 o'clock bodyguard is going to off. But them times we, we don't fear no sound at all, man. Because me say, well, we know we're there, obviously. <laughs> I don't see no spoiler dance, man. Yeah, man. And, 
And we take on the body girl and, and big, big dance man, big, big dance. And most of the people that came to the event thought that we won the dance. Being oh, okay. the, because body girl had such a big name at the time. Big they didn't song, expect man. us to even the last the night. You know? Who were the selectors and, and, and body girl? Johnny and... Um, it was Johnny and him, Johnny and another guy. I don't oh, remember the other guy. Oh, I remember yeah. Johnny because he stayed on long after the other guy mm -hmm. left. But Johnny, I remember Johnny and somebody else, right? And then after that went so well, then we, 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 we got a date with Stone Love now. Oh. You know? And every one of them dance there is like people can't believe because them claims to them so I got shot with them and we just kept going like people are left. I said, no, sir. It's like even if they won the dance. People that say we because as a small sound we never supposed to stand up like that. Like, stand up like that that people have your wonder, you know? Mm. And and unfortunately one of the events, uh it's sad to mention it, but somebody went saluting, you know, them time they have this fully fully thing where you call gun salute, yeah. real stupid. And somebody must I don't know what happened, got shot in at them foot or something. So they put a damper. Dance? Yeah man, it put a damper up on things man. Oh, but okay. um, I remember that incident, you know. And uh, mm. but them events were really big events that attracted people from all over. Big, big events, man. Those two particular yes. dances. And the outcome of those dances really propelled us, you know? Propelled us forward. Pushing him and a Pushing him. further and, and further. And a lot of people don't understand, you know, that in those days, you play for almost little or nothing because you build a name. So people now see you with a name and they don't realize where it come how from. Much how, much, how much you had to put into it for build a name. Because it was almost nothing. You know? But we were building a name and, and, and we had an objective. And a, a, you, know, you see the, the light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. So we kept going. Eventually now, as the sound grew, selectors you started adding selectors to the bill. I think the next addition was Glamour G. Yeah. No, um, Winston would be the one who would be credited with getting Glamour G, because, of course, Glamour G was from Spanish Town. Yeah. In the Amplex. Amplex, mm -hmm. right. So at the time, BSADC started getting more dates. Demands were coming in, dates were coming in, and we needed to expand also with the selecting. So um, I remember the first time we saw Glamour G, Winston was the one who actually sent him down Sent him down to you? Yeah, sent him down and remember picking up a brownstone because we were on our way to Discover Bay. We had a dance down there. We had a dance down there, I think it was a Thursday night. And he was waiting for me in brownstone. Like, him sent him down on a bus and we okay. picked him up a brownstone. And Glamour G went down. And of course, he was an immediate hit, you know, because mm -hmm. he, he, he really did bring another level to the thing. You know what I mean? With juggling, he was really a good juggler. So he was there next, Glamour G and him. So it was now me, Tinawan, Tinawan and Glamour G. And we started to really turn up the heat because Glamour G's experience playing in a Spanish right, town, right, right. what it brought to the table, you know? So, so at that time, good I, addition I to good, the, to good the addition. And at that time, now I started to step back because Glamour G was mainly into mixing oh, okay. and Tinawan was mainly into talking. Oh, of course, oh, Tinawan okay. had a mix sometimes, but that, that is where it all. You know? Yes. It all um, went. So I eventually started to step back a little because Glamour was like fast upon him. He was just Glamour G. Talented. Young boy with talent and rearing to go. Yes, you know? yes. Mm -hmm. Then now, I, I think 1991 was when the great Squingy joined the, the team. Well, I don't remember the exact year, but what I remember is we used to play with Squingy down at one of the most popular venues in the center. And they used to call it Pansy and Alan. Pansy and Alan. He was right. playing Easy, Easy Rock, Rock at the time. Right. He played Turbocharge at some point too? Yes, he played Turbocharge. But when we played Turbocharge, I think Squingy was on... Easy Rock. Uh, Easy Rock, something like that. At that time it was... When you were in Delhi or Dooley or... We used to play Turbocharge. Okay. Was their top selector at the time. And um, so we played... We played um, Easy Rock up by this particular night, up by Pansy and Alan. I remember Squinchy coming to me and say, Why well, I love to play that sound here, you know? Oh, okay. Yeah, man. Because one thing with us, we always have a good sound quality and, you know, coming in at them days uh, and dub plates and all of that. So he come and say, Why well, I love to play that sound here, you know? So 
I remember the night following or the week following, we were going to play at Brownstone, come see. Oh, okay. And I said, well, meet me and come see the night. And I could see, you know. So he came, he didn't play, because oh, okay. we already had Glamour G and thing on, but he came one. and he just stand up behind the sound and them guys do them thing, you know. And I remember him said, just left me back, nah, I don't like it, man. Me reach back a beer, you know. And that was cringy. And he came back and we had a little, um, we had a, somewhere in Alexandria where the selectors would stay, you know, down by the same oh, club so, we used so to play. So at that time, mm -hmm. Keith, you had an establishment for your selectors? Not, not really. Not what happened really? is that my, my cousin now, Briggy, okay, he, had okay. a, he had a club around there, so. Okay. So he, he had somewhere downstairs where he just make available, like for the man who out of the area, right, right, back, right. so they could stay there, okay. you know. So he came up, so we didn't have an established, like a, it was just Briggy who had the, the space. Right, right. And right. say, all right, well, for those who don't live here, they can catch there, you know? Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So he came up and he stayed quite a bit of a time down there instead of going back, you know? And um, of course, he just go from strength to strength because everybody knew of Squinji's potential, you know? Okay. Because this man, when he, when he go around the sound, is like, you can say, this is what this man was born to do. You know, when him come to mixing and talking, you just say, no man, this man, uh, this is what the Father bless him with. Because I think when it, whilst he was on Easy Rock, he was doing everything. Yeah. Mixing, talking, yeah, yeah. everything. All of them things eh? Yeah, man, he was just... And I remember we playing against, we playing against a song up by Addison Park on Sunday night. I mean, we see him Easy Rock, I don't remember, but he was playing on the other song. Oh, okay. And the man was, you know, you, 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 you knew him talent. But when he came to BS Odyssey, of course, he couldn't just walk in at the top spot. So. people were there. Yeah, man, people were there before. before. And when Squingy, I say, would have gotten his biggest break on BS Odyssey, is our first tour to England. Which year was that, you remember? Can't remember Can't the remember. years. But what I know for certain is Tinawan was selected to go. He was a foundation man. Right, right, right. So Tinawan was supposed to have gone to England for at about two or three dances, you know, um, and, and, um, and come back. Of course, Tino and go for nearly six months. He no come back for nearly six months. <laughs> <laughs> and, and this is a man now who made you set up an opportunity. Squingy. Right. So in the time when he went and spent all of that time, Squingy and Glamour G farmed a one of the wicked is juggling twins that you could ever, you, you couldn't go in a dance when them two guys are playing in that dance. Mm. Squingy and the mic and Glamour G are mix. And the man them just tour down everywhere them go. is like the vibes turn extremely high. You, you just couldn't compete with them two guys, eh? you know? Mm. So they were the main staying or the juggling twins to be a Sadducee. And um, of course, when Tinawan eventually came back, you know, he got the big reception, like uh, you see in Bold coming home. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, man. Can I do it? Foundation, you know, the, yeah, foundation, man, I come back, man. The man I say, wait till Tina Wan come back. And he had his diet advance, you know. And Tina Wan come back. And, but it, 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 it wasn't easy. It pierced it hot. No, yeah, man. And plus, you know, he, he was in England. I don't think he was really Play. into the music. Mm. So it was easy for a man come back and pick up from that piece there with them two you just said. So, of course, everybody excited when they come back and they play, but when them the two boys they come on after that, it's like the piece turn up, you know? And it was one unfortunate thing that happened to us in, in that thing when he came back, is that we had a clash with Silver Hawk, I think, and Squingy did already beat Silver Hawk, um, Circle B farms, you know. And BS this, with BS this? Yes, man. It's going to beat Silver Bad by that Circle B farm, man. And the return leg was going to be in Chilani. Okay. And that was when Tinawan come back. Oh, okay. And Glamour G and um, Squinchy decide, say, since everybody has said, why did Dan come back? They're not playing the sound. Okay. Yeah, man. And the man, them sit down in the bus, man, and say, they now make Tinawan play, because everybody has said the big man come back. And of course, that is the, the, the defeat that so Silver, we, uh, Silver Heart beat with uh, the night down there. Because Tinawan was playing when, um, when him tell Tinawan, go, I can't forget the brother make some stupid statement and, and get fouled. Richie, Richie was playing Silver Right. And tell Tinawan about um, 
He might come from America up and farm. But whatever he said. You know, he farm working some some fool, but whatever he said, it did easy to counteract the speech. Okay. okay. I never said right. Right, right. Like right. whatever it was, God them time, then nobody named him go to America, I think, but farm. Okay. But he just find something to say. And he Tina and couldn't counter he didn't counteract it. And we lost the clash and them boys sit down there and me and them had it out, man. Can we say imagine? Yes, man. I <laughs> said just because I couldn't, I couldn't convince them to come out and play the song. Because I said, well, everybody has said, Tina one, come and make him play, make him play. And, and they didn't. And um, me and them really had it out the night there, you know. And, um, but the one thing, Tina one, he stood around him sound and he played Tina. You know, run for him, run. He, no, man, he stand up on him sound and played still, man. But that was the unfortunate incident coming out of when he came, came back, back, of course. Right. And um, you know, after that, no, we, we managed to patch up everything, right. patch up everything, and put it together. And of course, it was obvious the demand was more for the juggling yeah. twins. So, you know, and eventually started to have to step, step back, back because the PSC does for them guy there. Too hard for him. Him, him couldn't yeah. manage them, them two guy there. Yeah, I you know? think another defining moment in Squinge's journey was. It was supposed to be a clash with bodyguards somewhere near the courthouse at St. Dan. Right. Well, that no. I don't remember if it came. I think it came after he came back to you. Okay. I, I'm not certain. Because so much of them things happened over the years. Dance, yes, but man. But you decided for no play. Right. No. What happened is that we had played in Portland the night before. Okay. And a man did want to play in Portland. Maybe, you know, yeah, but it's fairly ruins. Time, yes, you know. man. We also play at Portland. Them times we also clash nearly every week, man. Every week? <laughs> yes, man. The clashing was the, 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 the thing them the times thing. there, you know? The thing. Yeah. And um, I remember we playing. We, we were coming from Portland. And the next day it was a sentence be at a place named Basalan. Basalan, yeah. Near to the so courthouse, I think. Near to the courthouse. So instead of coming all the way up here, we go back. We decided that we were going to just stop down the demand. Set up the sound. Set up the sound and everything. And then make the selectors and we, some of us come up, go and sleep and left the maintenance to the sound and then go back down. So that's what we did. And when we came up, of course everything was left now just for come on and switch on and play. Mm -hmm. Right. But apparently some people come on in the evening so and um, decided so they want to hear the sound, you know. And one of we maintain and not knowing that time we never have them mesh covering over all everything, you know. Oh, okay. It will cover the equipment. So one of them decides say, him, he might go, go and play the sound. And the crossover, you know, them time that time, old time crossover them, you know. And in trying to turn up the volume, the man turn with the frequency. So instead of the tweeters are play like from Nothing. 12 go up, you know. Right. Him turn around and make a whole heap of bass and lick okay. off all of the tweeters them. So when we go down there the night, the sound have no quality. And of course, bodyguard don't play and call we we not have no tweeter. All right? And Tina one decides that him not play so and so. Ah. And Tina one said, Why well, not? I not played so in a while. I not played so. And Squinchy was there, of course, in the wings, you know? And um, so I remember going to Squinchy and say, Watch out now. So man, I say, I'm not playing so And my son, I nah, lock off, you know. Because the next thing you're going to hear the next day is that bodyguard lock we off, you know. So my son, I nah, lock off. So he yeah, said, And him just said, Oh, yeah, say, Wally, man, I'm ready, man. And the man go around that zone without Twitter. Twitter. <laughs> and believe you, man, the man turn up a piece of heat in there that even did you know, like him feel away. If you see what Squinchy did without right. you, the sound not playing as good. And that was one of the defining moments. I can't remember just where it fit in, because right. that would have had to be before, or maybe when Tina Wan just come, I'm not certain, but it was somewhere in that time frame there, right. you know, but I'm, uh, I'm certain about the event. Yeah. But he took the opportunity. Yes, man, took the opportunity, man, and he, there were countless times when he just stood out, you know. And Squinch, the love where he had for the music. As I, I can recall, one night we, the school was, the, the, the system was playing over the school over the side, you know, and wasn't properly promoted. And, but you know, me nearby. So me just walk, go over there about you know, at 11 o'clock. I'm here, Squinch upon the mic. <laughs> you know, and I, like, I rip up the place, you know. So me I said, boy, I place ram of people, so I run, go over there, go look. And the man alone in there, you know, man. 
Abila vibes. Abila vibes, you know. He's alone in the Raja Believe, so the place is full of people, you know. But that was just him, you know. And he took that opportunity for, where do you call it now, for strengthening skills. Right, just, right, right. You know, like practice. So every like, moment was know? an opportunity for him. Yes, man. Mm. Yes, man. He quickly became one of the most loved and feared selectors in the space. Right. Because he was very good in the juggling dance and a killer in the killer dance. Killer Right, right. And his talent was also exceptional, exceptional as I say, you know. Um, juggling, it was hard to be matched. And then the chemistry with him and, and, and Glamour G, G as well. And clashing, it was like, you know, he was just so fiesty. Because Screen Jesus naturally a fiesty brother, you know. Right. Naturally a fiesty brother. Him no care is who, him just... Tell you, well, you just said tell you in mind, but him just naturally fierce to you, say something to him, and most of comments coming back at you are like harsh. Right. So it just benefit him in the clash field, you know. So every little, any little thing you said to him in the clash field, he mm -hmm. could defend and counteract it right away. I think the next person to join the team was Lenny. Yes, um, because of the, the link you now with Glamour G out of Della. Yeah, so Lenny, used to Lenny play started, stuff. right. So Lenny started to come down on weekends you now with Glamour G. Oh, okay. Oh, so, okay. So that is where the link came from. So he would come down, you know, them stay and him just attend the dances, not really taking part. He wasn't, he wasn't playing with bass at it. For most of the time, or for the first couple of months when he come down, he wouldn't play. He just okay. come down with Glamour G as bridge and them go dance and all of them something there. But every once in a while, like, before Squinji come or Glamour G, he would have take the mic and go and do him things. So he used to say him, he could do it. Right. You know? I think he also played jam rock at one point in time. He was well. playing jam rock too. Because when we beat jam rock at Spanish Town, Lenny was on jam rock. Oh. Right. So, he, he, he made feel with hand, not just from coming with me, but right. when him go over jam so rock. He not only and, see it, but him feel he it. He feel it, yeah, man. Because <laughs> what he was, he was alongside in the group with us, you know. Right. Right? But him, we just couldn't take him on as a permanent selector okay, at the okay. time. So he went over to Jamra. Oh, okay. You know? And um, and so after Jamra and thing, and he came back, and he became one of the base of the selectors. Um, of course, Jazzy Jeff, I think, another one from Spanish Town. But all of them guys were Jazzy just... Jazzy Jeff was one of the Jazzy. persons who, was, who played the night over Portmore and Adi Skillano. That's right. And that was such an unfortunate incident again, because that is where the, the breakdown started with really with me and Bunny. Oh. So the breakdown was somewhere around that period there, because I, Squinji and myself, did not attend that dance. You, know. you guys were overseas? We were overseas, but we could have come back, because we were, I think it's Bermuda and so we played, and we had the flight to come back. Okay. But we, we were totally against it because I want thing with Squinji, you know, if him not get new dub for going to dance sometime, do interested for going. You know. If him don't have the ammunition when he feels he can win. He you know. Go in. Sometimes him 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 well I wouldn't say all the time, because he would do it. It depends on the circumstance. Right. But in this case and how this dance was set up, he was not with it. Neither was I, you know, because we we had our disagreements with how this date was taken. And we won't go into it really in detail, but we, we were not in favor of it, you know? So we reached uh, Florida and we stayed. We didn't come down for the dance. Okay. You know, because there was no preparation in our mind. It's just um, friend and friend, you know, and then get the date and no preparation was done. No tunes were cut. The, 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 the sound itself was not playing well because I know we had certain equipments that were not working, some speakers. Everything was just wrong about that event. Everything was wrong. And um, so Jazzy Jeff, you know, I, my partner he got Jazzy to go play. And Jazzy couldn't match. Um, it yeah, was fierce. fierce. And, and them time there, you know, them time there, the first two dance we play with Adis in America. So you know, played Adis already? Yes, my way. Me and Squinji alone go play Adis in New York and give them a beat in their life. In their yard? Yes, man. In Brooklyn, a place we call them. Um, what the place is name again, man? we all of the clashes in Brooklyn. Built more? Keep. And a built more? Built more ballroom. I, I, I saw it go. But them turn right, it in as so, No, sure. man. Amazura came on after, after that. After, okay. Right. But Squinji alone, me and myself, 
right? Me and um, Squinji, rather. Right. You know, Matarana me alone went to that. Matarana play a dish. At time, Matarana stand up and face alone, really, I use the mic. Matarana get a little talk once in a while. Oh, like him, yeah. I play early. But early. when we are play, a baby face, I do 90% of the talking, mm. you know? And um, then we play them in New Jersey. All them time, ne? So it was them beat, then our face have it up in him heart. So he have to kill this son. He have to kill this son. Because no son will come and give him such a hard time. You know? And so it was that whoever took the date in Jamaica wasn't me. All right? I think my partner them took the date. And we didn't go into it prepared, none at all. And so me and Squinch decided, said, be a far, what was happening? We were not going to come to the dance. You know? Because um, so we lost badly. You know? And Jazzy Jeff, as I said, was playing at the time. Ooh, I think ooh, Lenny ooh. too. Uh, Jazzy and Lenny? I, I think so. I know Jazzy, I remember Jean that name distinctly mm. from that class. Yeah, man. Because yeah. him and Glamour G, Lenny, they were all friends. And another, another guy that two way went on to play 4x4. Four four. He used to, he used to the amongst us too. Um, I remember what his name. But he used to, all of them were sound system selectors, selectors in a Spanish right, town. Right. So they would come down with Glamour G and just hang out for the weekend. Mm. A puncher, pannier. So, but him used to come down with Glamour G. So, all of them used to just, just hang out, really. You know? mm, so. so, that was when the, the, the business relationship started breaking down. Right, at that, that particular event. And what happened at that dance even made it worse. You know, Because, of course, we lost badly. Because, you know, nobody loves to lose. Nobody. No. But one thing you do when you are taking certain clashes at certain sounds and you know the potential of, of your adversary who you're playing against, you have to prepare. Uh -huh. You can't just go in it like say, you know what I mean? Like you just do it for the love of it. You have to prepare. And that really caused the slide to go even faster, you know? Oh, okay. So me and my part, we, we, we had disagreements and the disagreements got worse until we just say, you know what? You go on ice and me go on ice. You know, how we do one thing. You know. So he was now taking bookings under the name under, yes, as well. Yes. And you were doing the same thing. Yes, because he continued to book as BS Odyssey with the selectors who wanted to go with him go. So I think um them used to freelance. Oh, okay. But it's one person who never went and it's Squinji. And Squinji was always over my so side. So you were okay with well, we, the we, movement there? Why we couldn't do no better, you know, because really and truly we were friends and we never mm. wanted to I respect that. Face a boy, take no ugly turn, like right, going right, to court right. and all them things there. So me just say, all right, yeah, well, you do your thing over there, so me do my thing over there, so. You know what I mean? But of course, I was always the one who was in the studio, I cut the dub plates, them and all them something there from day one. Because right. from day one, me was the man who, uh, who do most of the, the dub plates. plates. Yeah, man. And, 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 and none other things, you know. But um, when he took that ugly turn now, he would go with, I think he got a guy who used to play inner city. Um, blocks, I think. Black car, you know. So he, when he got black car, uh, Glamour G and Lenny them was more, but they would freelance. Okay. They would take a dance with, go take a dance with Bonnie from after. And where oh, the biggest fallout came now, where the biggest fallout came is a dance that they went to in Florida, right? Because mm -hmm. they took a date also in Florida, you know, because some people would have called Bunny for a date, right. some called me. Mm -hmm. So he took another date in Florida, I think, with, with Addis, too. Okay. Yeah, man, and take a date with I think it's Addis. Okay. And we were not a part of that. I think it's black and... But I remember that Glamour G and Lenny were to go. Okay. And I remember talking to them at De La Vega. Uh, where, up where they come from? De La Vega. De La Vega I City. Argue. I remember talking to them and saying, well, if you don't go out, that freed me, I don't know. Oh, you did? Yeah, man. So I give them the ultimatum. So they didn't go. Right? So I think it's Black and whoever else played. I think Skinny, so Skinny came along somewhere yeah, in the mix. Yes, there too, you know. Skinny, Skinny became a, a member of the team. Yeah, Skinny came that down to, from Spanish Town. He was up at Spanish Town. Too. So he came down and he was there going around before. Because for a good while Skinny was with us, too, he wasn't playing. Oh, okay. You know? But then, um, so the guys didn't go. I don't know if I'm mixing it up, because there were two, two events in Florida 
that happened. And one of them, them actually canceled it when they found out that I knew, you oh, know. Okay. So they took a juggling date in a club that I think that I think they were the ones who got that booking. I'm not certain if it was, I know it wasn't me, because when a friend of mine, who I knew about is a friend of mine in Florida, called me and said, why be a this I play down here so Friday night? I said, what do you mean by that? He mm -hmm. said, yes, man, and him all, you know, them tiny any of them WhatsApp and them thing right, there. Right, right, right. He tell me, say, be a sad a player. So I contact them guys and threaten them and say, Ray, Ray, if they go, them, not, them, them can't come back by my side. So they didn't go. But what they did know was take the date like a month later without the former promotion, hoping that I would know. You know, so they eventually went. And when they went and come back, that was where me and Glamaji and Lenny now severe ties. You know, so when they come back, I say, watch out. When I do nothing, me do mine, you know? Oh, okay. And then it was left you now with your squingy and me call back in Tina One. Oh, okay. You know, so at one point, my side only had squingy. And Tina One. And Tina One, because we'd bring back Tina One, you know? And um, Glamaji and Lenny, I think they eventually migrated, but I know they weren't doing much with. I think with, they went back to the Amplex when they left. Right, they started to rebuild Amplex, right? And Bunny was left with um, Blocker, I think. You know, and Skinny mm -hmm. used to go do some freelancing with him too. Yes. You know, but, but basically it was, you know, it's, it's not something that I even love to talk about. Talk about. Yeah, it's just an unfortunate thing that yeah. happened, you know. And, um, you know, maybe if we, if we were really live life again, we'd have done things better. But at the time, it does just at that point we are... That's how the thing set up when we made the decision mm -hmm. we think is best at the time, At you know? the time, uh -huh. Yeah, so the thing kind of... Splinter a little bit for a while until mm -hmm. so that is now when you your side became now the original we, 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 in, in order to try to differentiate it right we use the term Z Z E oh, Z, Z oh, original oh, yeah. BSRC oh. so we started to attach that to our dub plates okay because what had happened you know a next unfortunate incident that happened is that um, we played Jaro in in um, in Florida right. And I had cut a whole heap of dub plate suite with Trooper. Whole heap of dub plate suite, maybe cut, you know, whole heap of dubs. And um, of course, we went there and we win the clash. Okay. Big, big dance of um, um, reggae cafe in, a, in a Florida. And we win the clash convincingly, because we'd really prepare for it, you know. Right? And that was after Trooper beat, beat back at these. Right, right, you right. Know? Right? So, so sure, we, we couldn't, so we're going to um, beat Trooper up at reggae cafe. Bad, bad. And by the time he come down, you know, and um, they are relaxed. You know what I mean? Because the, the, I, was, I was of the opinion, say, the dubs of me cut now is mine. Of course, all of the dubs of me cut is mine. Right. But the so all of the dubs of me cut is mine. So if you go do your thing, you have to cut your own dub. Mm -hmm. Right? But unfortunately, I never saw <laughs> it was. So somebody have my sound, which it means suspect. Suspect him and eventually fire him. You know, one night after the sound finished, play the man get on cassette and tape of all of the new dub they may have. Everything we may cut and send it over, go give money. You know? So by the time me hear him play all of them something there, me, me attack my suspect when me have and, and fire him out of the group too. Mm. You know what I mean? So, but little by little, what used to happen is that me I cut the dub them and he would somehow be getting copies of them. So somebody was and, and that was him. But after he left, then the, the whole thing kind of narrowed down a little. But every once in a while, still it would have happened. Because a whole heap of artists and studios knew about the right. rivalry, what oh, was okay, happening. Okay. So someone I got, I got to tap into that too. Because so, a way that we make a extra we, food. We, yeah. That we make extra food. You get this and you know, say, you can't go sell the man over there. So for yeah. half the price where you pay the artist them. So it was a, it was a hustling. So me used to have to go into the studio now and make certain say nothing on record. Oh, you know? Yeah. Only my thing I record. Only my thing. You know? <laughs> Cause the next thing we know, we can't forget we caught some killer. And by the time we play it, the man I play all of them. Yes yeah. man. And I mean I say no man, but this is no fear, man. Cause me and me I spend the money now, I pay the artist and do everything, you know. And you are just benefiting from, you know. So, so it did really make things even worse, you know what I mean? So um, 
that went on for a good while, that went on for years where you have Bonnie's side, of course, his son came on board and was playing it, and then you had my side. You know, but the, we really didn't want to take it. it. It is unfortunate, but it was heading to a point where maybe it would have reached the courts and all them something there, because we were getting flack sometimes when them play, and you know, people were saying, you know, having difficulty knowing which side to book and all of them something. So it was an unfortunate incident, a fortunate whole chain of events. Right. Mm -hmm. Worm and um, Mark, Mark came back after right. a while. Right, so when we were left now with Squinchy and, and Tina Wan, what happened now is you'd have believed Tina Wan would have learned from the mistake with England. So we sent, I sent him and Squinchy <laughs> now to go and dance at Florida, you know? Used to, it was Tina Wan and Squinge, you know, right. I play, you know, you know, I said him go and dance. At that time, out here now, I don't remember who else, but we, we, we got in, um, Worm came on board, he used right. to play Conquering Lion. Right, 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 right. So Worm came on board and... Um, I think Mark was playing Echo Stone before he came back to you guys, I think, I'm not sure. Yes, well, what happened with Mark now, he came back, yes, and was playing Echo Stone, right? As, he wanted to play bass at the scene, because Mark had come back long before. Oh, okay, okay. Right? And he wanted to, but at the time, we had all the glamour, the we Lenny, couldn't we on. couldn't take him on, so I told him that boy, there was just no space. So that's why he ended up with Echo Stone. Mm. And then whatever happened with him and Echo Stone, he came back and... Um, was at a nightclub where my cousin had Bill a brownstone. I did help to get him the job as a, as a disc jockey in there. And then when the club was closing down, he come back to me again and said, boy, well, he's not going go on if I can, still can't take him on the sound. And eventually, because Squinchy never liked it, you know? Squinchy was against it at first. Said, boy, well, we don't need that man, you know? Whatever oh, okay. him and Squinchy had. And, um, I convinced Squinchy to say, watch her. The man is a good a, a, selector. A good selector. The man can mix him, him know him thing. So Squinchy said, all right, sir, you know, <laughs> and reluctantly. And um, Mark and Squinchy now form the, right. the, 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 the team. Because, of course, Mark was always a, a top guy, good guy with mixing and no songs and all them things there. Never used the mic, but he was a good mixer. And good him, mixer. he knew the box. Yeah, man. And, and he used to do well at the club, and them started. Him and Squinch just eventually started one Saturday evening thing down at the club in Brownstone. Okay. Mm, and them used to do very well. Every Saturday evening, the place would be packed. And so they started to build a name, you know, with Mark and Squinchy. But of course, I was saying, so Tina Wan went with Squinchy to Florida. Suppose to go just for the weekend, you know, Tina and the man hang up. Gone, stay up nearly three months again. So I said, boy, boy, legend, you know, I learned, man. You know, so by the time he come back again, somebody else take him place again. So that was Mark now? Yeah, yeah, Mark now come in and take him place again. So the team was now Squingy, Mark and Worm? And Worm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I tried to remember who came on board after that, because after that now, Damien, Damien was playing a little sound in the area. And I remember going to dance. Because them time, they used to care. Dilinji, yeah, man. I remember going to dance with Mark, and he was telling me, you know, we'd talk. And I said, why, well, the little guy, they have potential, you know, and we'd invite him to come on board, you know. And then um, we got Country Spain. Country Spain was on Black Cat and wanted a sound for play to. I remember Country Spain go to do a couple nights before me decide, say, all right, we are going go to use him. You know, he was. It was kind of 50 50, because you see some good, good things with him. And then one night, and we said, But when him come on, him may, him may grow. Right. You know, you're not going to find the perfect person. Right. But him sure said the ability was there, just want to bring it out. So we, we got Damien Country Spring. Cool. And we got, um, we can't remember after that, no, after Country Spring, Worm. Uh, who else was a mixer again? Why, Lexi. Oh, Lexi. Lexi. Okay. Lexi was around with the same sound that Damien was on. Because Lexi is one of the selectors that has been here for a long time, too. So Lexi came on board as well. And um, we, we, we formed a good team. Good, good team. Good, good team. You know? And Squinchy was the head of that team, right. of course. You know? So at that time, you know, we had acquired a. You know, we get a house in the year I rented a house where they would stay. Structure, man, and organization, Yes, man. man. So we are put everything back together properly now. 
you know, because uh, a lot of people thought that we wouldn't have survived this split, you know. Oh. You know, but we went through this split and we survived it and start to build on it you now when we are come out of it. And since um, one of them decides, all right, them, them are going to shut down for them side, you know, so it, it, it gave us yeah, man, it, it, that propel where we, we needed to propel the sound. I think no split no more. You know, split no more. Mm. So if people just know base of this, you know, for who we are, you yeah. know. Glamour G, they made leave. Skinny was with us for a while. Oh, Skinny had stayed at a Glamour level. Yeah, man. Skinny came back and was here, man. Because Skinny was so played bunny, you know. But him come back and him talk to me and everything. So I said, yeah, man, no problem. You know, and we... So it was Skinny and Squinty mainly with the mic. Okay. You know, and... Um, can't forget, man. Um, eventually, well, eventually, me and Skinny had some falling out too. Because it's one thing with selectors, you know. And... I don't know if it goes to everybody, but sometimes it's just hard to keep them under control because we were using CDs now. We had moved from cassettes. From, from, when the safest time final. for your sound man, you know, yeah, finally, the safest time for any sound man, I can tell you, was when you used to have a plate of a steel. Mm -hmm. You used to go out the, the thing and cut the dub plate, actually cut it like a record, yes. and you have them big heavy boxes. That was the safest time, you know. When we transition, it's easier to keep customs in your box. Because we used to have all of the dub plate them. So no matter what happened, we have the box of dub plate there, so the box of dub plate there, so, so they can't go out and play us be sad see, because they need the dub plates. Mm -hmm. Right? So every day, you meet the officer, here is the dub plate. And just so you go, as a matter of fact, just to go back, how, how, how Bonnie got so much of the dub plates too in, a, in a that time was when Glamour G and Lenny was going to foreign. I can't forget. Right? And we had a box with mostly old dub plates. So sometimes it depends on the dance because they were so heavy. Right, yeah, yeah. Right? Take care you, of what you, you need for that you, dance. You choose. Yeah. It's not like now with laptop where you can carry everything. You also have to choose which songs you carry because you can't carry everything because it's so heavy. Yeah, right. right? So I remember them going to the airport and leave the box where I had in most away the, the, the foundation dub plates. They just choose to carry the the up-to-date one because right. it was a, that kind of juggling event they were going to. And Glamour G claimed, say, I don't know if him set him set me up, you know, to this day, I don't remember to ask him. But him claimed, say, boy, why well, the box is too heavy? So him leave the foundation box in the yard, Spanish Town. And of course, by the next week, Bunny got to go collect it. Mm -hmm. So that was how him get a hold of most of them, because he just went there. So you had copies of those? Yes, man, but oh, okay. on the sound right. system. Because remember, me always have the sounds like the chuck and the right, right, and all right, of those things. Right. So we had some copies. Okay, okay. But there are copies that maybe. You never get for cut back. We, 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 like duplicated. if we did have one copy, like some foundation, it would hide in another box there. Because okay. we know if we are going to clash, we'd have, you know, so maybe certain one and two copies maybe were not duplicated. Because that time you. If you duplicate songs same time, then you know, it's not like, no, when you just go home and just put you in on something and do it on your laptop, you know. Yeah, them time you used to go to the studio we'll and sit down mm. and wait for this for cut, and then you say, all right, me I cut twice. So when the man don't cut, that thing cut another one. So it was not only time consuming, but the engineering, the whole process was a challenge, you know. So sometimes some of them would not be duplicated. So the foundation box was missing there, so, but the majority of them were still on the sound, yes. you know. And to this day, I've not really asked him for, for that. You know, so if it's up to him, if he want to give it, give it, because, you know. Right. So some of the foundation songs were there. You know? So that was how he, he acquired a lot of that. So to pick up back from where you right. were now. <laughs> I was telling you about the how selectors used to do it. Right. So when we, when dub plates kind of phased out now, and CDs, when CDs were coming in, of course, now you have your pouch, and you can, you just have this big pouch, but one CD can hold, but so much right, right, with MP3 right. and all of that. So, it was hard for TM them selector, yeah. and <laughs> why Skinny, I remember going to the airport, drop off somebody, and running a Skinny down there. I mean, skinny, where are you at the airport? That time, the man take a base of the CD somewhere, and I go away, and I go play. Oh. Okay. So, remember sitting there, I mean, say, you know, say skinny up to something, do you know? You know, because some like a red flag, you know what I mean? So, I sit down, same place, because most of the people, them, pan the airline, them, because we used to travel so much, right, nearly right. every weekend. So, they know me, and they know Squinchy, because I had 
I don't know where else we were playing, so we just drop off Squinja at the airport, me drop him off and buck up in a skinny. So, as a matter of fact, I tell you what happened, I mean, I remember, is a bridge in a mine used to own Sly Slick. Mm. Me, I leave the airport now and buck him up, like me just run into you. I said, hey, 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 what's going on, man? And me say, yeah, man, and me just left skinny around there. So, I said, skinny, what skinny are you at the airport? <laughs> so, so, me just, so, me just go back to the park. And tell me where you know, tell me where So I go around there and I see him. And I notice the last call for the flight then, but him can't go. He can't move. He can't move. <laughs> so he gone, so you know. And the lady at the counter called me and said, Mr. Alford, this bag belongs to Skinny. You know? him not, um, isn't he coming for it? Because he, he can't leave it unattended. Didn't he? So I say, Well, yeah, well, give it to me. Because they know me. Yeah. Uh -huh. When I pull it, man. One pouch full of me double plate them so man. I didn't even know skinny of them. But them time then, you know, you could not just go into a place and just push in your CD. Whoop whoop run off. Exactly. Whoop whoop run off. So there's some me and skinny fall out now, cause me seize it up, me just left with it, you know. Then you could have left there, there is a me while. Carry the whole <laughs> pouch with me. Skinny wife called me, why? Mr. Keita, me did buy him it for your present and re, re, re. me say, well, I might double them in it. You know, so me and Skinny had with differences, right? Okay. So, mm, and, but the man who me and Skinny, me and him are one of the best friends right now. Okay. Me and Skinny. Okay. There's hardly when him I work with Ray and Evie, hardly in a time come check me, I'm not carry one quarter VX or something, and we still gonna drink <laughs> and laugh it. about it. You know? But that, that, that's what it reached. But selectors in them times, eh? Okay. And that is why I give Squinchy all of the ratings, you know? Selectors in them times, they were just so hard for control because now they could take dates, them get them... Independent of the sound. And, and you don't know, you have no idea so them playing at Texas or them playing this, so you just don't see them for the weekend. Because my mind them can't leave Friday and come back and Sunday come back morning. Sunday. You know? So yeah, by the time you miss them, they mm -hmm. back, you know. You know, so it, it was very hard. Yeah, so, so now, basically say, became a giant soul in the space. Lo locally and internationally. I think the first time you guys left, you went to Canada. Yeah, man. Well, the first trip we did to Canada was me and Glamour G. Yeah, and Glamour G. Yeah, I remember when Squinchy was there and Squinchy said, well, he didn't want to go. He turned it down, you know? So me and Glamour G alone went to Canada. The first outing that be a to make. And then the second outing, I think we went to Bermuda. Okay. Uh -huh. I remember those two, Glamour G and Squinchy went to Bermuda. So, mm. but uh, them time, you know, be a to clash every song, we a clash song. Yes, man. Them time, they, you... Because it's not like now, you know. You see, the thing with now with clashes will make it so difficult now. Them times, uh, customs weren't the other the day, mm -hmm. you know. Customs were, yes, a man may, might be squeezy in a one or two, but he does songs, you know. But nowadays, what happens now is that a man listen to your songs, and in he know the strength of your songs then, and, go and he go counteract it, and say, you know, so he study it in counteract it, or who don't counteract it, study your box, go cut the same songs and then come at the, the, the clash and, and, rinse, them and rinse them out before you play. Uh, uh, so right. clashes got more difficult and more costly. Because uh, them times, you know, me and you are clash all say tonight at Spanish Town. Next week, me and the next man clash at Mobile. Because I'm doing no one play Spanish, Spanish Town. Town right. No, a man sit down and him live and him listen to everything <laughs> and him take notes of everything. And why no counteract in go to the artist and say he want it the same way, you know? Because some of some of the biggest songs and our boxman I try to counteract them. We, we Charlie Black right, the, the Buju Banta man them we have. And one little man that they counteract it the same way. Uh -huh. You know, instead of being creative, we say why make we expand on this and get get our own ideas right, and right. come with something better. You know? And and those who go them just try and cut the same thing as me say and try to play it before you. So it drive up the cast. And it makes clashes so much more difficult now, you know. Mm. So, but we're still in the game. It's not as interesting as it used to be. It's, it's not, you know, as enticing either, you know, because right now in a clash, most of the time now, because of the direction that it has taken, you end up spending more money than, what you're than you can charge. Which is true. Just we try, if you know, going in a clash now with one, maybe five, ten custom songs, it's like, you know, going out with nothing. I remember going on the, one time we go on Jam Rock Cruise and everybody I play about the sea and Jam Rock, you know? Everybody for them dub plate is about why the water over the so and the this and the that. 
everything is about that. You hardly are hearing the original songs. And we went on there, you know, come he decides, say, certain things just don't make sense. You know, certain things just don't make sense. You spend so much money, I cut that, and just for the one occasion, you can't play it again. And right. I will tell you, one of the biggest songs I hear in our clash, and is Renaissance I hear played, Panijamra Cruise, is a song with Junior Gang, Wycliffe, and somebody else, three the hardware com combination, you know. Mm. One of the biggest songs up to this day, me ask, me ask Delano, why would you cut a song like that person in a custom? That would be a, that would be a song where the whole, like your anthem. You played forever. Me, me, no, me no hear nobody the, the come, cut Wycliffe and, right, right. Wycliffe and, and Junior Gang. That and should just be a, a dub plate and not a yeah, custom. Cost and the man them played both the ship and both the this and both the that. Yes. And, and you know, ironic, that song, they never get that response from me, they expect, you know. Mm. But it is a big a, song. Probably I would select a plate, man. Probably if I did one next selector, I'm going to just see that go and do them thing. <laughs> but it's a big song. I mean, I always ask them, why would you do that? Because I can't afford to spend a quota song though. like that just for one night. That don't make no sense. Like in, so it never make much sense to me. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, we wouldn't go down that lane there because if you're going to be in it for the long livity of it, yeah. you, you can't support that kind of thing. That's no wise. And mm -hmm. I mean, say, this is a crash, all of the crash sound at the time, if you say a particular thing. So sounds like, well, you know, we had these throw down quite a few times. Yeah, man. Because so we, we did beat back at these properly, you know, yeah. after they won at Jamaica, you know. Because it's one thing we do, you know, you take defeat so easily them time there. So we, we had a, I don't know who put it on. We had uh, Addis and Bodyguard now in New oh, York. Okay. Yeah, man, and Squinji and Mark. And we did prepare for it this time. And that must have been one of the most embarrassing moments for, for Addis because okay. the in particular, a, yeah. yes, man, in a Brooklyn, man, the particular dance that Squinji play, the big youth boat hit the road sound boy and split the dance in two. The man said, want to party it like him party, see, and the crowd up and they saw, and him just go down the middle, the crowd just open up and give him space. And that was, I think, one of the biggest beating that I would say at least getting to New York. Mm -hmm. And that was our kind of revenge for, for Portmore, although we weren't at Portmore. Right, right. For, but we, 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 we did re reprieve ourselves. Yeah, them song. time, they now punter up on top of them game. So Black Cat used to go now all the time, sometimes. Yeah, man, Black Cat, Black Cat was always a, a sound where we and them used to clash nearly every week, you know? And we'll honestly, honestly, some. yeah, honestly, I, I think we win over 80%. Right? Most of them? Yes, man. Yeah. Without any doubt, man. We, we beat Panta. <laughs> I mean, I have no apologies to that. But Panta, Black Cat never really have a lot of what tunes. It's just like Panta to tunes, no off But it's just the skill of Panta. Right, which is Panta, true. you know, no fi creating gimmicks and things. But they never really have a lot of tunes. You know, from, he has from, said that for true. From early days, from early rounds, Panta start play foundation and all them things there. So it depends on the crowd where they buck up and right, them love right. all foundation and we win. And I remember one, one night where Black Cat beat me and me give Panta in ratings to that. Because we, we never even take him serious, you know? One night, I think, on a Green Island. Okay. And they sound them string up. And Panta give me a good beat down there. I mean, me, me, me remember that the night there. He used the garnet silk at that time, we never get it yet. Um, on garnet silk at the time, I can't remember his name, but he did new, mm. you know, and somehow he got it before us and he used it, man, and we couldn't come back. We didn't drop it the night, man, we, man, we, we couldn't come back. And we take we beaten, mm. and we have Panta a good friend up to yeah, this man. day. World selector, man. Yes, man. One of the generals yes, in the space. Yes, man. We don't met you, we met you media a few times. You know, met you, met you, is not really a class on person. Hardly clash. Right? Mm. Stone love a few times. Uh, well, a lot of times. <laughs> me and Power had one of the, one of the serious fallouts. And uh, you know, Power play my son, and me and play my son. And, and we and him had a, had a little... Uh, for, for over seven years, two of them were there to be a Salasino. You know? Oh, yeah? No, man, they never used to take there to the band because them guys did clash him, especially well, Lenny did clash. Said road. Yeah, man, they I mean, would clash him a couple of times. Think man, Chico. I think Chico, like right, with Chico Lenny. Up, yeah, uh -huh. so. uh, Lenny, and Lenny was that type of a man to where you just couldn't hold back, you know. When him getting a film thing, it's like one of them bad dog. You have to just make him go and bite up everybody. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Man. And, and, and he made really get out pan stone love. I think one night at uh, um, a Spanish town. What a place the name just before you go down in the garage. I think we did play this. Damed. So. Damed. Mm. Yeah, man. And he made really give it to them, man, and post up the date to the man. Blank we have. For <laughs> nearly seven years. Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. And I said this, I can't forget. When, when we first played back with Stone Love, 
is when him keep carnival, right? Byron Lee keep him carnival. And a man from Byron Lee thing called me and say, he want a dance hall flavor to the carnival. Okay. So he want bass of this is tone over Metro Media string up in a cinema too, mm -hmm. right? And I say, well, we don't have a problem, you know, but I don't think you're going to get stolen off to play with me. Okay. And what the man said to me you now was, you know, well, shocking. The man said, well, how you believe I got your number? Uh -huh. We give you the number for call me. So I said, okay, then we're good to go then, man. We, we don't have no problem. Right. And believe you me, we go to cinema too, and it's one of the biggest flap dance I ever seen at town. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember. BS Addis is Stone Love and Metro Media. And the dance flop? Yes, man, because what happened, people still think there was a strategy because they have one big carnival further down. So it's like a choice. People had a choice. Oh, for God, the same the night, the carnival was down there, so, and we had Stone Love and Metro string up in a similar two up there. So. People are going up there. I think the only people in night was we, the sound man. Them. I can't remember <laughs> nobody else would come in at that dance. <laughs> I remember that. Yeah. I, I stand curry, but I remember clearly because I was there. You, know? yeah, you and you guys and Radigan have gone at it. Jaro. There, yeah, there, man. there are some endless there was a clashes. Famous with clash with Jaro on a junction. That was a clash mm -hmm. when on a son. That is sad. Up and all of them that is sad. Chupa was just it's that a kind of one. Oh, oh, gunja. We shot fire. People get injured. People just running at the wall and lick it down. Because it was one of the biggest clashes ever in a central the sound, the sound column? No, nah, man, no, the wall. The wall. The wall. The wall. There's a the wall. Land. Yeah, yeah, a land. A wall where they put up in the land. And, and lick it down if we come out. Yeah, man. And, and that was so unfortunate, you know, because the clash there, and if, if Chupa would talk the truth about the clash, you know, come up to a day, me and my brag and bow, so I shoot up the side of the And yes. <laughs> yes. You know? Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. Let me shoot up yes, I see. Yeah, man. But yeah. then, no, I think after that, Jaro couldn't get no date in another, another yeah. zone there. Jaro couldn't get no date down here, so either. Because for we fans them now, because that was going to broke out in a naval civil war, you know, man. Mm. Yeah. That was going to break out. It had the potential to break out in a all out sound war, you know, mean tune, you know. I know, man. You know, man because. Physical level. Know. Physical level. Can me get lick over my eye, you know? Man, they over with a no, a buckle man, because at the time, and, and, it, and it start over so stupid, because Squingy a burned down the place, you know. And Squingy, now them time that the rules in clashes was like, up to 12 o'clock everybody play hour. Oh, okay, okay. After 12 o'clock is half hour, okay. half hour. That is the rule that we know about in a clash, up to 12 o'clock everybody play hour, hour. After that half hour, half hour. So Squinji goes so boom and boom up that bunny place, you know. And stop playing one call in Jaro, and you say, a half hour I'm a play. And Chupa come in and say, ooh, play your one. And, and no ask, you know, when Chupa start, you know, play your one. And they bad the explicitness behind it, you know. And go on and go on and the crowd start with an uproar. So me take the mic you now and calm down the thing. But somehow, when Chupa did they go on bad and not talk about the play your one. One of the fans them fling something upon him. Oh, okay. I don't know what them fling, but it licked the mic and lick it out of his hand. He never really get licked. Oh. And me upon the other base of this side now, I talk to the crowd and try to calm it down. And whoom in on my face. And buckle stopping you know, right over my eye. And when I go down, I just saw the me only like, boy, boy. And man, come I mean thousands of people in there. You know. And that was it. When I go down, man, and I can't forget. When me down the pan the ground, yeah, man, some man come over me and say, oh, I have a good mind, kill the this and that, you know. Yeah, man, can't forget yeah. me hear it, man, I have a good mind, kill the this and that. But me couldn't even look, look up, you know, because I'm stunned, you know, and blood had come from over my eye. And I think I the same bunny there, I can't remember, come and hold me by my hand and lead me and we go to one place of safety. But that time, a pure gunshot and everything in there, man. And we, we, we call my box, them lick down everything. So of course we found the them. Was damaged. Yes, man, damage the everything. The sound truck was damaged. We know well. pass everything damaged, man. Box them everything. Don't ask until it's back there that night. Just over what me tell you. That's as simple as me tell you. Is so it start, you know. And um, of course after that, Jaro couldn't come back this side. And there was 
you know, animosity a brew, because people are saying, oh, anyway, John, anyway, you know, so, you know, them kind of things are just not good for the business. Right. True that, true that. So I remember Mr. Harper called me and said, boy, Keith, you have a data in jail, but tell me what to do. Because him no one, and I said, Mr. Harper, right now, I don't think you're coming up. Because that was the first jar where I come back down. Oh, okay. And I said, because I really, because I didn't open a bed for a couple of days, you know, I really can't, you know, give you the assurance that I can control right. for what happened. So I don't think it's best. And then it carry over to a dance in a port more where two sides of them, two sides of them, um, what you call it? Friends. Very bad friends, mm -hmm. you know? And it, it did really escalate and between Glamaji and Chupa and them, somehow they managed to calm it down. Oh, okay. They managed to calm it down and it never gone no further. And of course, me and Mr. Harper managed to build back the thing until, you know? But that was one of the unfortunate, very unfortunate things in the dance hall for me, where mm. I could have lose my life, right? So, you know. Yep, yep. Mm. A lot of sacrifices to build it. Yeah, man. man. Holy, man. So, that sounds like, sounds where them names not really call a lot, where really did some damage back in the days where you guys really and truly kind of silenced them. So, the, the Mandelas and the Canon and the Integras and. Yeah, man, we Earth play with all of them. Rulers and all of them. So, yeah, every one of them. Earth Ruler, we play in a built more. We play, them time we play Soul Supreme in a built more. We play LP. We played Mighty everybody Crown, up there. Everybody. Okay. Play Mighty Crown was the first time I think was Amazura. Oh, you know, okay. they came on after that when Chin started in world class thing, mm. you know. But um, all of their songs, Jam Rock, Super D, you name them, we, we played all of them, you know, Silver Hawk, every song that was, you know, we played them at some point or the yes. other. You know? Which song gave you guys the, the most consistent fight and which song beat on the most back then? Uh, honestly, I, it would be hard to say, uh, but, but Jaro was always a handful. Chupa. Yeah, man, Jaro was always a handful. Because the thing with Jaro is that he always have some nitty gritty and he have some songs where you just can't get. You can't get that right, right. You know, right. Nitty, some artists will pass and go mm -hmm. you know. So sometimes when you lead him, you lead him, most of the dancers with Jaro will lead him right through. And then come take tune for tune. In a tune for tune because of the nitty gritty and so then come back in the dance. Can't forget a dance all the hard for it. We, we, we are lead the man them like we ahead. When he come to jog them, they're nowhere near away. But when them say tune for tune, then come back in the dance. Because they're the nitty gritty and some of the other artists that had park, you know, they been in the business long, long, long before long, we. Right, right, right. And the early B and them something there. Mm -hmm. So them was always a handful. Um, you know, everybody, because I would say we would have lost to nearly every song out there too. But, beat song out but, there but I am of the opinion that we have beaten, if we, we lose, but we, are, we, we record as far as winning is more than 75%. But we do lose one and two times. So every time we lose, we regroup, find out why we lose and we go back. Mm -hmm. you know? We have never been in a situation where we lose and we sit down for one year or two years or try Panda Waffle though. Yes. We lose this weekend, next weekend, we're ready again. You know? And, yes. and that has been the trend for us. Charlie Black eventually became a member of the, the organization. Yeah, man. Charlie, Charlie can't forget when Charlie came to. Charlie and um, he, he, there's a song where he used to play. Don't remember the name. We have to forgive me. me. Yeah. Don't know of my long yeah, time man, memory of fate. No, but Probably Charlie, know that Charlie used to play a song and I can't forget. One night, when he, the night he came to me, him and the other, two of them from the sound system, you know. And I said to him that, boy, we know you, you know, so we can't take you, but we can't, can't take the other, other guy man. because really and truly we don't even have the space for you, but because we know you're such a talent, you know, me ago. And Charlie came on board and did what he do. Came in, live one of the house with the select of them. You know, me have to make a special provision for him at the time because there was just no more room there. Right. You know, because all I select of them, and sometimes even the maintenance man him used to run okay, there. Okay. It was like a base of the house. Yeah. yeah, man. So Charlie, um, we had to make special provisions as they run at the house where, where the selectors were. It was like a base of the house. Queen yeah. also keep him party, and so keep them party around there all the while. You know, and um, he, he came in, was a part of the team, was doing very well. Um, went to Canada, I think he and Mark go Canada 
of course, unfortunately, my mark of them disagreements again, because when Charlie cut the song, he eh, first big hit, you know. Yeah. But um, Charlie kept going, and uh, more strength to him, you know what I mean? He was one of the better, good, good mic man, he was one of the good sound man, the man. Even in a, just after COVID, he, well, he was playing the sound. As a matter of fact, right now we, are, we still have dates with Charlie. Yes, okay, man. Cool when, man. When Charlie now have a tour, man, he will call me and say, Boss, you are going. I'm going to you know. Nice yeah, man. one. And he going to come play the sound, I think, last year. I don't remember if he played since year. But he played the sound at Brownstone. He played the sound, you know, different. Yes. depends on what his schedule is like. He will call me and say, Boy, he will come in. So, Basically, nearly all of the selectors, them who used to play bass at the scene, you know, me and them still have a very good rapport, you know. The only man who I have not really been in touch with is Lenny. I don't know where him there. Okay. But Glamour G, all of them, well, I don't know about Jazzy Jeff either and the other youth. Them. But right. the one they we used to play, Pande, like, um, were, 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 were on the team, you know. Yeah, you know they're still you know, good. You know, most of them still good, except for, I don't know where Lenny is. And, you know, I've not been in touch with him, but everybody else, man. Yes. You know? So Charlie, I mean, I just hope same, you know, his career keep going because right, right. he's a very good Doing guy. Doing very well, man. Doing very Doing well. Exceptionally mm. well for himself. Mm. You guys know some, 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 I wouldn't say famous, but clashes of people really can say, okay, basically say, um, UK Cup clash, you don't win that, like I did phone one at a time, 06, yeah, we win it. 08, mm. 06, 07. 2008 and 2014. Yeah, we win it about four years straight. Because I think after Squinji passed and Worm got to go win it. Same right, because right. Worm mm -hmm. won it 2014. Squinji right. died in, and, I, and this is what I'm going to tell you, Squinji died in 2009. Mm -hmm. Sad situation. Man. Yeah, man. And, Big and, loss to the music. And, and you know, the sad thing about the whole Squinji episode, you know, is that it could have been avoided, mm -hmm. you know. Because I remember Squinji had, he was sick. He was sick. Um, I took him to a specialist them that I could, you know. I remember he was recommended to somebody in Montego Bay, so can not go Montego Bay for him treatment, you know. And um, but Squinji is a stubborn guy, you know. Let me tell you, say, fiesty man. When Squinji first went in car, you know, we first car Squinji get, you know, and we book him up on the road and I say, say, we are going to boss. That was night, 10 o'clock, you know. Boy, I go run away, go buy two cigarettes. You know where Ronald Bia is? I'm going to drive to I can't buy two cigarettes. Go buy two. You got to do some steak. You say, boy, I want something to smoke, you know, while you're on. That's how you know all of the bar. I'm going to drive to Ronald That's about nearly 20 miles on the road, you know. You know where Ronald Bia is? But he was that kind of man where he had a mind on him own. And a lot of times, me and him fall out. Because me and him fall out, I tell him, say, oh, man, go sit down, man. You know, play the sound tonight. But me and him, nobody couldn't get between me and him that way. It's like... Christmas every time, this was like him second home, you know. But um, he went to the specialist, you know, was getting some assistance, medication, everything was working, you know, because he went down, you know, and then he came back up okay. after the specialist gave him all of the treatments that was, you know, to help him. He came back up and started all play football, was all over, and somehow, as I say, as stubborn as he is, him just stop taking treatment. It's like a man with blood pressure tablet and him just say, boy, I can't take that because it, you know, you hear say it, you know, make you perform with ladies or something like that. So you stop taking it and then you just get a stroke, you know. So Squinji came back, was good again, all around the place after I went down the first time. And of course, you have a call relapse. So he go down again. And when he went down again, and the specialist and the treatment was getting harder now, you know. So he said to me, he said, boy, Wally, me I go to America, you know, because he have this good friend in America, Kirky C. We used to play for Kirky all the while. Mm -hmm. We used to play for him. Kirky was like, in a them time, they like one of our brothers in, a, in America, where Scringe could not go there, go steer. He used to have date for we in a Tampa, in a this, we go there, so him care, we go. He was just a good friend. We in a record shop, we do everything, Kirky C. You know, and... I think he had some relative who was working at a hospital. Okay. So Squinji said, he might go up there because he figured he would get better treatment because he wasn't getting any better, you know. 
So I tried my best to discourage him from going. I really tried to discourage him from going. Because what had happened, you know, because he wasn't so strong anymore, we had to actually get one of the maintenance guys, other guys who lift up boxes and stuff. We steer the house to them, we cook for him, do everything. Okay. So we had somebody there right round the clock with him, we help him, you know, go to the bathroom, right. cook for him, you know. And it was a pleasure for the guy then because everybody was great him and so. The guy would have around there and cook everything. And um, but him just wouldn't listen, you know? And him said, Why am I sell him car? Him sell him car, him sell out some other things and change out the money in the US and said, Why well, he may have step, you know. And when I find out me couldn't me couldn't stop him, me eventually had to buy him the ticket the same way, you know. And it is unfortunate because when he went, he was really I mean, when we know them take him by the plane, he was, he was fairly weak, mm. you know. But he find the strength and him reach. But I think what happened now is when he arrived there, like them, you know, normally when you go a foreign with, with promoters or whatever, or whichever, you know, them put you in a hotel room. Because Squinji had money for him, you know. Right. Squinji left you with, I would say, over 5,000 US or so, because he had sold and buy the US kind mm. of plan. So he must stay a while to get the treatment, you know. and. When he left, when he got there, at, at, this is my assumption, right? But that he was left in the hotel room, right? With the ESC and all of that. He can't help himself, right? And nobody no check on him for maybe a day or two. So by the time they now hear from him and go there go see him, he, he, he contracted oh, yeah. pneumonia, you know? And by the time he reached the hospital, he, he passed on. But that is what I assume, because we had to have 24 hour so um, help. Well, really, help, yeah. help. Mm. And, and the sad thing about it, we up to this day, me try to forgive Kirkusy about it, you know, is that instead of when Squinji reached there, him took him to his he, home. He, no man, him called me, because we and him had that kind of relationship. Oh, okay. Instead of calling me and say, Wally, um, you know, Squinji there and Ray, 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 what is it? He never called. Okay. How me know what was happening with Squinji, you know, it's not a glean, I mean, read it, you know. You read it in the paper? In the paper. Because somebody put it in the paper, how Squinji, but you know, people are trying different ways to undermine with sound. Right. You know, so me read it in the paper, say, um, selector, whatever, whatever they put in there. Because them now take it for make propaganda, for make, make it look right. like BS Odyssey Guys. was not, like we didn't no, turn we back on him, mm. you know. But the fact is, he was there and nobody couldn't reach him for no phone or anything. And they not calling us to make we know what happened. Instead of calling us and tell us, say, this is what is happening, they put it in the paper. So when we get it in the paper now and start calling and calling him, he might go make me know, say, boy, Squinji tell him, say, me, say, you have to come out of the room for the next selector, for the more selector. Oh, okay. say, then, really and truly, if the man even tell you something like that, I'm mean, your friend. Link me. Link me. The first thing you do is call me. And if you say, then kid, how you do that to speak? Call me. You know, wait and put it in a paper and go through all of that before you link me. You link me first. You know, and um, boy, I'm sorry about it. So Kirk, but, was the one who, who gave the info to the, to the reporters? I, I don't know who. Okay, okay. I, and I'm not going to accuse him. Yeah, man, I understand You that. know, I don't know who. It's but just one thing I tell you. Just yeah, just yeah, but one thing he must have shared with other people, say, boy, Squinchy, they and Ray, 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 and I'm a fear take care of him. Because everybody of them one way to say things, you know. And I'm a fear take care of him. So I don't know if it's him was the one who put it in the paper, but somebody did, you know. And of course, it casts a bad reflection on us. It would. Yeah, man. That was and it. man, all of a sudden, we are here, say, man, I keep benefit dance him, a New York benefit dance him, they so. And you know the funny thing about all of them benefit dance, eh? In a benefit squinchy. Not even one cent out of it don't go towards burying him. Man, they might get benefit, but for themselves. For themselves, because to this day, the laptop when go up with, we don't get it back. The monies that he had, we don't know what happened to it. I think only thing come back to Jamaica with him body is he close and go up, you know? Right? And all of the expenses are we don't have to burn it, we bring him back to Jamaica, bury him, do everything how we have to do it. You know? And none of them benefit that say, we don't know if it make a dollar or it make a million dollars. But nobody reached out to say, you know, uh -huh. help we make this half right, so help this to her. Nothing. You know, and, and and it was really created a bad stigma. 
but those who know of the relationship with, with Squinji. Because I tell you, Squinji was such a guy, you know, where Squinji was there, and he wanted to tell him, Jar. And you have sound man who would do anything for Squinji complete in sound. What Squinji would do is just call him you know, and say, Boy, one, two, tie and Wally not deal with nothing, you know. <laughs> so the man is there. Wally not deal with nothing, you know. Man, all give me some little picky money, you know. But one thing they don't realize is that with all of that, after them send money, come give him for buying tire or whatever mm -hmm. I need. And they must say, Then you don't come. Squinji never, never left here so yet. Him, <laughs> him, him just know if he come across right, to the man right, them right. who who seek him ability. But him now nah left BSR this one inch. Mm -hmm. and, and, and they should have looked into that to say, then if him have if he must suffer so, or if him now nah get pay or what it, then why not leave? And none of them not look into that. Mm -hmm. You know, if you say if if you in a situation just like how the teacher them are runway now, because they nah get no pay. <laughs> Right? <laughs> you know, you are sick better. Right. Right? But this man sit down in a and, and him not go nowhere. So something must be wrong. But, but all selectors them something there. We get to understand, say, a lot of selectors will, when they need things and them see people who will, you know. Provide it. Provide it readily so they pass bend and the truth information. Sometimes. They bend the truth yeah. and, and get what they want. Yes. And Squinjina as was, was a man like that. Yes. But he, 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 he enjoyed himself today, and I think he, he go a couple of exclu what you call it, uninclusive hotels, and him squinchy was a squinchy. You know them days, I can't remember, too, we had come back from foreign, and when we land at the airport before him buying car, squinchy rent a car when he land, you know. Like we have a date this weekend, and we have a date next weekend, he rent a car, and we'll be driving the whole week, and we we'll go back the next week, and bring back Jump the car, off. you know. Mm? <laughs> That's the kind of man that yeah. he was, and you know. He buy a bike one at a time and he like it. I don't know if he sell it or it. But that was Quincy. He was just a man with a, you know, you could have hardly come across it. Hard to convince him to say, don't do this or don't right. do that. Once he make up his mind and say, I that him I do, I that him I do. So you have to just find ways to work with him. A man who is widely regarded as one of the greatest selectors in the history of the music. Was that a sad day for the music, man? Very sad, man. Very, very sad. And we all took it very hard. I mean, we, we had a few dances. I remember we had one in Ochi, we had one at Sendika, you know, and different selectors would come down and yeah. just play, you know. But it was a sad day, very sad day. One of the days in a be sad is where we were, you know, we'll never forget. And, yeah. you know, one of the sad days. But as you say, the work keep going and the music have to move on, yes. you know. So we had to just move past that and keep going and keep going. So Damien came up. This is where Damien now emerged as, 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 start to as come a lead through. man and the song. Mm, start to come through because he spent so much time around Squinji, you know. You learned from him. He learned from him. If you, know, if you even listen to Damien now, sometimes you believe a Squinji Good. attack because it's like, it, and it's just natural. Right. It's like him just get it from him, you know. Mm. And, and, and he acquired a whole heap of, of squinchy skills because he too can mix and talk and right, do everything. Right, he don't right. need nobody else with him. Mm -hmm. you know? So he mm -hmm. came through. And of course, we still have Worm and um, um, Bishan came on too. Oh, yeah, Bishan. Bishan came on as another mic man. Then we have Vilmore. No man, Dwayne, I'm a son. No, Dwayne, I'm a son. Dwayne, I play the son sometime? No, no, hardly. Hardly. I'm also the managerial part of it. But we had a selector named Dwayne who was a mixer as well. Okay. Uh -huh. But he moved on to um, doing one thing. Mm. And of course, there was Mark was there. Um, then to the latter part now, Spread the Glory came Spreading. on. And then um, well, a new youth now named TJ. You know? And of course, Country Spring, he migrated. And him and Keith, that I had a son. Them okay, do, Keith. Keith, Keith, him overseas. And then we do them thing over there too, you know? Oh, okay. Still a part of the team. So right now we still have about 13 selectors. And we have still? Harry D. Yeah, man. Uh, we have about 13 selectors right now. How many people Harry are on D. staff in total, Ross? Uh, boy, it would be pretty near 13, you know, if you put in context, you chuck them. Because remember, we have drivers and maintenance driver, man who string the sound, man who play the sound early. Uh, maybe more than 30 because the selectors alone are 13, but Kitty and Spring overseas, but right. yes, you still have to count them, and, you know, they are a part of the So the organization selectors. is still strong and, and, and going? Well, I, 
I am very happy with it. You know, the guys are good, you know, who have not yet learned learning. Even the new ones, you see the potential coming through. And those who are there already, you know, doing them job. Because as I tell them, you know, your job is really not to come and try to build a name again. Yeah. We already have the name. Yeah, right. You just need to come and maintain the name. And of course, if you can build upon it, wherever it that is, but good. that would be good. But you just need to maintain it because the name is already out there. You know, so we have guys who we are very confident that they do, and they do very well. You know, of course, most of the requests come in for Damian. You know, so mm -hmm. when he goes over the overseas and so forth, you know, the other guys have to step up and stepping up to the plate. You know, so all of them, I stand it to is one who came on recently. And I try to remember all of them, right? But in terms of. Um, those who are senior, you would have Worm, Damian. Do you even remember if I win at that order? Or Damian and Worm. Alexi. And then Lexi. Um, uh, but if we, if we, maybe it is, I mean, name the Mike guy them first. So we have Damian, Worm, Vilmore, Bishan, and Spready Glory. Them specialists with the mic. And then with the mixing, you would have same Lexi, Stenet, um, Mario. Uh, Jovi, which is another new selector, we have Jovi National doing very well too. Um, you name TJ, I hope me not forget nobody else, you know. <laughs> Sometimes hard. we have Harry D who play early, you know, okay. Ricky play early and the other sound. You know, I hope I don't forget no names. Yeah. How, so. many, how many physical, how many dates you can take one time locally? Uh, with the 13 of them, we can do up to five. five. So, so you have five different yeah, so, we, so we have done it, but we play, we, we play five different places on a given night. We have done it, you know. We, are, we have to split it in such a way that maybe Damien alone go play, then two man go there, so two man go there, so, you know. So, yeah. so we have the capability to do that, but it always incorporates um, overseas and local. Uh, local, we do by about four for the night if, if we need to, you know. And, we can, and them guys overseas can do one or so, you know. So we... we, we Sometimes we extend ourselves too far, mm. but on a whole, we try not to extend ourselves that, that, um, that, you know, like that. But like in you know, the holiday seasons yeah, and the, the dates and, and the requests right, are right, great. Right. So we, we try our best to make certain so we cover all the grounds so we can, you know, because of course you have the January, which is very slow, slow so you yeah. have the September, yeah. which is very slow. Mm. Make you while the sun shines. So we, we try to make you while the sun shines. Makes sense, makes mm. sense, makes sense. I mm. understand. Some of the other famous clashes include World Clash, I think 05, on a win that, I think Pier 1 was that, and 2014. We know mm. other World Clash in here, I tell you the two that I remember off the top of my head. Mm -hmm. Right? Also, uh, the war territory for in Italy in 2012, Uno win that. Mm -hmm. Sound for dead New York 2011. Mm -hmm. Some fest, world, mm -hmm. world, world, world type clash. Some fest clash, Uno win that. Some fest, we win um, that. Mm -hmm. When? Two years of work, sir? Not this year, the year before. The year before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then now, in um, 2014, base of this is anniversary event became Sound Fest. Right. I have to give my daughter all of the credit for that one Yanni. because Yanni, she planned that and come and tell her I have reached a stage now where me, you know, them things they take a lot of planning. It's um, like in you know, the earlier days where you could not just do it. Right now you want um, man to put up the whole of lighting, the this, the that, the whole procedure with permits and God, that's no, you know, it's not like them days. It takes a lot, it take a lot more lot energy more, and time and effort the, 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 and the, money. Sometimes even the stress we go through just to get the permit for the place. So she, she's the one who planned the sum face and all of that, you know. <laughs> and um, when, when, when she cannot do it, I said, just put it off till you have the time, mm -hmm. you know. So she did one in um, plantation last year, I think, then she did one in at Sabina Park, February right. Sabina, gone. I was supposed mm. to go to the Sabina Park mm. one, but I never reached. Right. So we, we tried to go one I one now forward. Yeah, man. And, and I know she was planning to do one next year again, but she she kind of moving in between Jamaica and, and the US, States. you know, because, you know, she works as well otherwise. Right, so, right. So it depends on her 
schedule and how the time will allow, you know, she will know when. But we always give her that option. She does tell me the date early enough. Uh, we blank that off and say, all right, that has some face or so forth. And we go ahead, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Of all your time as a sound owner, selector, which is a sound outside of your sound where you think is the sweetest playing sound ever here? <laughs> Ah, oh boy, kind of curveball that because, <laughs> you know, actually, I have always said to myself, and I tell everybody this, that you have to learn to appreciate the amount of effort a man put in his sound. Some man builds some sound where, as I said to people, they want to play it at Jamaica and make man in Miami hear it. <laughs> You know, because some of them so loud. That, loud right. Yeah, man. It's like some people go off of the loudness. When them play, man, it's like, you know, sometimes you wonder if them no feel so the people want to stay inside of the land to hear it. Mm. You know, but um, I think in other day, in other day, uh, I, I can't say for no, because yeah, we have to back, back, back in other day, Stone of always had a good quality. Always had a good quality. All of the big sounds, them had a decent quality, you know. Mm -hmm. um, nowadays, with the Chinaman, them with them amplifier now, because, <laughs> you know, it, it is, you know, yeah, the, yeah. The, the Chinese, just like anything else, they, they are some techni technical, so, some, yes, yes. some genius, them, everything they build, them know how to do it. So they have been able to build amplifiers for maybe one third or a quarter of the cost where the, the other amplifiers and, 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 and sounding good. So you find, say, even up to a few years ago, how sound, you, you go to and you play with certain sound systems and they never have no quality at all, you know? Mm -hmm. Because they used to have to recycle certain things and all of that. But now you go, you know, man, and nearly every sound sound good. Nearly everybody, those who never used a sound so good, a sound and good I, now. I improve them thing. Um, I, I improve them thing. Yes. And nearly everybody where you got to have the same kind of amplifiers, you know? 90% so it of sounds. It kind of become standardized. It, it kind of yeah. become standardized. So mm -hmm. what it has come down to now is really those who have the little touch when you know, fine tune, fine tune and get out certain qualities where some people just can't grab a hole on. You know, but when it comes to bass now, everybody will lick down the place if you, if you know, build out a block and steal them and shake down the place. You know, so it, yeah. it's own system thing has evolved and it keeps going and we, 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 we're glad for that. You know what I mean? We're glad for that. It's just that, you know, all of us have to just realize and know, say, that we don't have to kill each other to survive. Because I don't know where that mentality come from, say, me have to kill you to survive. No, nah, man. The amount of people who want dates in our music, right? Enough dates are there Man for everybody. Man, tell me every day, say, me need to build a third sound or a fourth sound. I say, no, sir. <laughs> no, sir. The two right you know, is, is a headache, you know. Right. Uh, and other people are there, you know. So we don't need to kill each other to survive, man. Mm. The dates out there, all you need to do, go out there with your good playing sound, mm. make the people dance. Some people will book you. You don't need to have to say, boy, I have to kill BS or see, otherwise I can't be number one. No, man, that is foolish thinking. We all, there is space enough for all of us to survive and go on the each and we get to one little peer share of the pie. And as long as you're doing what you have to do, you will, you will get fans. You'll yeah. get people who support you. A selector that didn't play for you, that you enjoyed listening. Oh, boy. Um, as I said back in the day again, you know, way back when I was a little boy and I got listen sound, me always like hear Rory on the mic. Stand you know, he was, yeah, man, he was like a standout to me because he was, you know, aggressive. You'd have to get troop on the same um, baby face. Yes. Them, man, they take the role for aggressiveness. Like, them just aggressive. <laughs> you know, don't, you know, just, but, but, you know, and a whole, everybody have them strong points and them weak points. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But, um, we, we, we really been there, done that, and went through quite a bit, you know, man with good mic voice, man want to have much good mic voice, you know, and because all of that, you, you know, Import, yeah, important. Because if, if you've noticed, you know, is that when you're watching certain networks, you know, appear pretty human upon it, you know. Actually, I thought, uh, <laughs> so, so, some people know if you strategize the same thing to make people watch them thing. Yeah, Sometimes you watch all the news and you never hear what the person is saying, you know, because yeah. you say, man, you know. <laughs> 
<laughs> so, so it, it's a whole past tragedy in everything that you do. Marketing, man. Marketing, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and, and in today's world, you have to be able to go market your thing and really yes. know if you keep up there. Few mm. sounds have as many dog plates as a bass of this would have. So the dog box deep and varied. Mm. Tell me two, three dubs in the box where when any time them they play, you get a different energy and vibration. Just something special about them, them dub plates there. Yeah, well, the dub plate where we would have to mention, as you say that, the is Bojo the same Bojo Bantem, because that was written by Charlie Black and nobody else can play it. Mm. You see, that is where we love to have some exclusive things where Man, all I go to him up to every time he talk to Bojo, he say how much man come to him want if he do it. He say, but the man them write them song. Right, right, right. You know what I mean? So you feel right for your song and carry on giving if you want. That plate is everywhere is Bob Marley. What are them? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, this is a great bass that I see out of Alexandria. You know, and and um, we have other dub plates where maybe not exclusive because the artist will do it for another right, song. Right. Mm, but the one they stand out because. It was basically a base of the idea that we took to the artist and him just do it specifically for us. And that is what we want, because we have asked other artists, you know, say, watch out, we want you to do something exclusive like that. Because no matter how it goes, if you can be original, you're going to, you're going to survive. Mm -hmm. You're going to survive. If you can be original, think of things yourself, you know, you not know, just do our next band. Because sometimes you go to the studio and the artist will tell you, say, why? The man them come and say they want it the same way like be a is the only thing to change are the name. <laughs> yeah. But so the, the more original you can be, then the stronger. You know, you saturated will be. space, you have to stand out, find ways yeah, to stand man. out. Yeah, man. man, and that's what we we have been trying to do. Yeah. You know, we have been trying for whole our own, you, you know, with our own ideas. A lot of the dub plates for the song. Mm. Is there any particular artist where you just enjoy going on the studio to work with dub plates mm. while it's back in the days? Um, I, I, I couldn't say that because you put me in a hot water, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but one thing I will tell you, yeah. in the days when B.S. Adesia had come out, we were fortunate enough to, this, you know, at the same time we had bus, Bontikila had a bus at the same time there, Beanie Man had a bus at the same time there, Buju Bantan had a bus. Because we remember when we used to go half with Chigo by record, we used to see Buju in there, with him party and him hairstyle and real soul boy, you know? So it's from them days uh, we, uh, we, uh, we, uh, we uh, deal with them. So them three particular artists, they were... The three Bs. Merging upon the scene, same time as the mm. B.S. Odyssey. Capleton was always uh, coming out at that time, to the, that the year there, mm. you know. So we are more familiar with them artists because they were actually... Me and all of them was in the studio. Right, right, you know, right. So we know them personally. The newer artists, I don't know so well, but everybody had them thing. You know, we appreciate it. Damien is the one now who takes up that mantle and okay, so Damien do most, most of the dubs them. Most of the dub them, we will talk with the other selectors and then decide what they want to do. And we say, all right, them tell me what they want to do now. Because it's at the stage you now where me can follow the songs were out there. You know? So them will <laughs> put, them, put them thing together right, right, right. and say, all right, Wally, we are going to town next week and we want this and we want that and we want that. And we say, all right, ray, 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 the cusses. And we try our best and them go off and do them thing. Yeah. And you made mention of Yannick just now, and you made mention of Kitty and Duane. They are helping to provide continuity and yeah, succession man. planning. Right, because I, I have been blessed. Mm. I have been blessed. I have a few children. <laughs> and I will just leave it at a few. Okay, that's right, that's right, that's right. That's right. <laughs> but the, the, the bigger ones, like uh, Dwayne is the eldest one and he's like in his 40s. So he basically is doing the bookings, the local bookings. Mm -hmm. And him go out with the sound system to him as like technician on it as well, everything. So he play multiple roles in a BS Odyssey. Uh, Yannick is more like the, the one who media. does the... the 90% of the social media with the page and all of them something there. Because I, I don't go on that thing. Mm -hmm. I am a whole timer. I don't have a Facebook account. I don't have an Instagram account. People will cuss me and say, but, yeah, but, me can. but I don't, I'm not interested. Because there is advantages to it and there are disadvantages to it. Yes. And they, they have a thing in life to say, well, you don't know, no hurt you. 
Because somebody come yeah, in, where so people put on them down. something there. Eh? That's true, man. Somebody it's come a, in. It's, toxic. it's a toxic space, man. Distasteful, man. It's a very toxic this space. Distasteful. It has so its it, pluses, but it has its minuses it, it, as well. Whole heap of negatives, man. So me prefer staying on my whole time, laying and just say, boy, you know, go and do my thing. I don't have to hear what you are doing over there, so I just focus on my thing. You know what I mean? I'm happy to hear that, you know, mm -hmm. some farmer continuity is there because a, a lot of the big sounds have shuttered and there was no 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 planning for planning for, right, for the transition. Well, I do think that we have things in place with my children, you know, and um, you know whenever the father called me and say, "Watch your kid, come up here so come race with me," mm -hmm. you know, it, 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 there is that continuity that is in place. They them just need to just run with the button. Because you know. earlier you want mm -hmm. this or this to play as long as, as, long as music, music is, playing. is playing, you know, we want it to play. So even dear children, because I am blessed with a whole heap of grandchildren too. A whole heap of grandchildren. <laughs> as a matter of fact, one of them playing the song right now. Oh, Romario yeah? is my grandchild, this is doing son, you know. Um, uh, yeah, man. So me have a son who are playing, a grandson who are playing. You know, and 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 yeah, so they bless the children, we, we, we bless man. So yeah. it's just for them for just keep the thing rolling because everything is already in place there. They just they don't have to do nothing more than maintain it and keep going. You know. Yes. Mm -hmm. This part, I'm just saying this to some people who probably wouldn't know and you'd be surprised because my kind of little bit louder part I think yeah, you enter representational politics and actually serve as member of parliament for <laughs> I think it's Western Saint Southwest Saint 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 mm, right where we are here now. Mm -hmm. Yeah man I I I was asked uh -huh. you know and when I was asked I was not affiliated to no party either I will say that. It's just that the member of parliament at the time was not doing a good job and um I was asked by that if I would be interested. Uh, somehow the word got around, you know, because we, we never liked what was happening. So I said, all right. And I remember it took me a long while to make up my mind. Long, long time, because I, I really wasn't, I'd never, me never used to go politics, me, me never in a politics, none at all. I was just a man who lived in my community and you know, me used to uplift the community. put on football competition, me put on cricket competition, and I'm mean, not affiliated to no party. I right. used to help the, 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 the Mr. Gallimore at the time with him football or cricket competition. I used to organize it for him. And when Mr. Shaw was the MP for the PNP the next year, I run competition for him the same way. So I was also a community guy, you know, who was never really interested in no farmer politics. And, but when the time came around, I remember saying to, um, to Lisa at the time, Hannah, when she, she, she was in charge of this particular year, right? and I remember saying that if the Labour Party is going to keep the member of parliament, then I would run. Mm -hmm. Because what he was doing, me can, me, it's like me, me so against him coming back. You have to but, but if they're going to put a different representative, because there was right. a guy named Warren Newby who's from here, so. They say if they're going to use a different representative, I wouldn't run because that means I would have hope for somebody come put some farmer development in the area. And I was overseas when she called me and said, well, the Labour Party has made a decision that the candidate is going back. I mean, as a man, now when me give my word, my word to me is goal, you know. So, of course, me put me in a spot and I say, well, me have to go deal with this. So I came back like late November and the election was December, you know, because only three weeks before it, it, I was okay. ushered into the, I did, did all of the necessary things still. I went to the, both the integrity people and I was interviewed, but I gave my word, so I did all of that, oh, you know, okay. and they got me in line and I represented. And, and, and I have no regrets. I did the best I could. As a matter of fact, I, I am confident that I did in my four years that I did more than even all of the, the, the representatives before me. And I was so confident that I would be retained, you know, because I only wanted to do two terms. You know, two terms. And, and cut out tight, because it's not my thing, you know. I, but I was confident. Yeah. yeah. But of course, you know, the, the area itself is a stronghold for the Labour Party. Yeah, because Gallimore was before. And it was so. the father Gallimore, then the son Gallimore, then Ernest Smith. So all in all, you check up the years that they have done is nearly 70, over 60 years they have been 
leaders of this, this constituency, you know. And I was willing to challenge them for the four years what I did to show me the work what they do for that time compared to my four years. So I was fairly confident in me that I'd win. But um, politics is not easy, you know. Strange place. <laughs> <laughs> politics is not easy, you know. Then take me by surprise. Mark you, at first I only lost by, I heard it was 100 votes and them, them still in a recount and I lose by mostly 200 or 300. I, I, I had no regrets in doing it. I, 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 the thing that is most challenging to me though is that I live in the heart of the constituency. And so everybody uh, knows where we find you. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes <laughs> just to go to my gate, you know what I mean? When you're MP, you have people there who are, you know, in need and of something. Yeah, right, you know. Because from what I get from most MPs, them don't live in the constituency. I, I, I am of the view that the MP, if you live in a constituency. That, that's what I believe too. But they only visit once a week or sometimes, not at all. Yeah, but I, I live here, so it kind of more put more pressure upon me, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah political representative, man, you have to take it <laughs> that, That's what I think should happen, you know, is that if you... You should have access to the MP, man. Yeah, man, you, the MP, if you live in a constituency, I not only tell me about the councillor. If, 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 if an MP is from the area, he's more passionate him to the, the development, the drama, and, him, and him want, cause that was what happened with me, you know, living here all the days of my life, me passionate for the development of the thing. And whatever it, 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 it really takes, me want to see it happen for develop where we live. I once had political aspirations, but all the mm. things set up on both sides, I divide. <laughs> nah, nah. It's rough, man. <laughs> Trust me. It's one of the oh, roughest no. business you can go in, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and we don't have to hide with stick, man. It's right. one of the most corrupt things to it in is, the world, man. It is. No, man. I think Politics. Thing kind of this way this way. Way. Yes, man. The corruption. Me never know say things could not so blatant. Yeah, man. Yeah, man, you're going there and you see some things and you have wonder. Man, what things could I go so? Because like a man just say, man, this is for me, man. Me gone, man. You know, it, it, just, it, it just shock you, you know? And, and if you preserve the peace sometimes and you have to know if you approach certain situations well, yeah, yeah, or if you yeah, find thing solutions. Too, as with the politics thing, shocking. We still have to give you because you saw a need and you put yourself yeah, man, forward. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, did what yeah me and I'm a word and I did what I did and I did the best that I could do with it. And uh, as I said, if I had won and gotten a second term, there were certain wooly pan finished projects so that I've finished. Mm. Especially when I normally trouble mm. this part of the thing, I really yeah, do. But don't... trouble is part of your journey still. Yeah, right? man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I have been there, you know, with, with um, different aspects of my life and that is one of them, you know. Mm. Mm. For what you have done for the music, though, Sir Walford, with the, with the development and sustenance of the sound system culture, which is critical to our music history and our history by itself, you have done wonderfully well. A sound mm -hmm. from we out in our country. country. <laughs> yeah, man. <'cause laughs> you do say there's original. Them, yes. I check out Black Cat and mm -hmm. um, Bodyguard, mm -hmm. out of it. Mm -hmm. All of the other sound them. I really and truly carpet era sounds them, the big name sounds them. Yeah, man. So it is you guys, bodyguard, yeah, black cat. I mean, you have some sounds from Moby side and stuff, and a few mm. other sounds, you know, the Jack Ruby and such. But right. really and truly, you have done something where only few sound owners have done. You have created a brand that is not just local, but global. Right. right. I know. And, and what we try to do too is that. A lot of our dub plates of Alexandria, right? We, we're not ashamed for big up because we, from we know country, man. from country, Alexandria, you know. Most of the anthems, them have something about it. Ernest Smith, Chronix, all of them, Bujo, all of them, you know. Because we, we incorporate, because we, we're proud of our country. And when we go overseas or anywhere we go go play, you know, we, we always stand with it. So. And that is just our... What would I call it now? Our, our, our thought process, right, right, you know, right. our, our form of originality where the other sounds don't do. So we, we have adapted to that and use it. Mm. You know? Father mm. Walford, it's a job to see the man still passionate about the thing. Yes, and man. also, like when you say 30 people you employ and the fact that the selectors are have living quarters, like it's a mm. business structure and I respect that. Yeah, I admire that for what it is, man. Big up yourself, yeah, man. Yeah, I man. appreciate the man's contribution to the Yes, music, man. man. It's a Full pleasure. And, and, and you see the thing with me and my crew, you know, we meet. Like when we lose the clash of Amobie, the Sumfest clash right. the, the last time, which in, we shouldn't have lost. Mm. 
you know, because we had, had the, the tunes to win. Yeah, yeah, man, and, and, but there's a mistake some <laughs> selectors make, you know. Yeah. We shouldn't have lost, because we, we know the, the songs them that we had, right. what we could have played. But somehow, like anything else, something just go wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, something go wrong on that day. But, and, and the only approach I had to it is call them in a meeting the next week, where everybody have to come say why we played as bad as we played. You know, uh, 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 so we try to keep putting together the crew, the maintenance, everything. We have a really good discussions and and for advice to every sound man out there. You know what I mean? Is you, you have to have this kind of rapport with the people who work with you and share ideas and you know see how best way to move forward and yeah. you know, find solutions. Cause, makes sense, man. Makes yeah, sense. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Anybody want to tell us your favorite Mark Nita? <laughs> I wanna meet me and Mark. You so um. Good friends, you know. Yeah, me yeah man, because I'm a cricket. Yeah, that. man. Mm. Mark was in under 19 when I was in under 19, you know, and it always oh, served on Jamaica cricket board, same time, too. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah, yeah, man, and congratulations for the work we had up on the cricket side because yes, man. cricket need a shot in the arm and leg and right. neck and then play, say. And same time, we're doing fairly well. You know, the two days we, we lost the semi final to Kingston narrowly. And last week we go again in the semi final for the 50 over and we lose to Melbourne. But you know, we, we, we get in there, the guys are good, you know, youngsters, them. So we, we're doing well. Big up a second, Blessings, man. Love, Blessings. Man. Yes, and it's a pleasure. I appreciate man. this. Yeah. Yeah, man. Blessings. Yeah, right. Blessings. Mm. Oh, for the people them out there, for whatever reason, who still don't know how to find, based on this, for whatever reasons, how them find you? Why if them just Google it, and the easiest thing that, because if you Google even Keith Walford, you get the, you know, and when you, once you type in BSRC, and the number is all about. And the number all over the place, but we can say it. I Same mean, the, 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 the main booking number is 3892568. You know, that I'm a son of 25. And I mean booking number. But of course, my daughter, she do the Facebook, the Instagram, you can link her to all of those things. and. Most of the decisions, them still ago, especially the big one, them ago come back to me. You okay, know? okay, so okay. A lot of the other bookings, well, then we just go ahead. But most of the bigger ones, them, we, we have that kind of understanding. Mm -hmm. as it a makes team. sense, makes mm -hmm. sense, makes sense. We are in agreement makes with sense. it, you know. Mm. Tina One is, is in Jamaica? Yeah, man, still around, man. Yeah. Just live down the road there from me. I would love to interview Tina One one at a the time. The man yeah. would have seen yeah, man. the highs and lows of the, of, the, of, the, of the journey as well. Yeah, man, he, he was there, still there. He go to us a lot of the times when we go dance and go to us. Okay. Yeah, man, he still go to us. Yeah. Sir Walford, give thanks. Yeah, man. Appreciate yes, the sir. opportunity. Bye. Yes, sir. Blessings. Yes, sir.